Boom, boom, boom. Diddly doom. Bow, bow, wow. Bow, bow, bow. Wow, 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 wow. Bow, bow, bow. Wow, wow. Okay, we're live. All right, boys. You know what time it is. What time is it? Buckle up. Could you imagine, like, an audience of people? <laughs> it could be fun. All right, so we're live. We've got 47 people in here. I appreciate everybody being here. Sorry about last week. Your boy got a little sick, and honestly, I just, just the head cold. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to be chipper tonight. So I took the, took the day off. So today's topic uh, is going to be bad life choices. I know I've made a bunch of those, <laughs> so it should be fun. Hope all of you guys can hear me well. Still a little sick. <coughs> it's cool, though. What's up, YZTC, Stomp the Elites? We're going to get some more, a bunch more people in here, and then I'm going to invite, put the link out for you guys to join in. And if you're new here, basically anyone who has a phone and an internet connection can jump on the live and say what's up and you know, if you want to share some stories, not the times you fucked up, you know, we can have fun with it, you know. It's time to smoke a fatty and say F it all. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I think that's one of my big ones. I'll, I'll get the party started. I'll go first. I think my biggest uh, regret and just a poor decision in life was smoking cigarettes. Yeah. And even the damn vape. I mean, God. It's been, I started smoking cigarettes when I was 17 and it took me up until basically recently, not too long ago to quit them. Like <laughs> I've had comments in the, cause I've said this before on videos and people are like, just get roasted in the comments. They're like, uh, bro, cigarette addiction, weed addiction. You can't compare that to, you know, alcohol or any of these other drugs. And I was like, dude, I know people who have quit heroin, but cannot quit cigarettes. Put it that way. You know, it's like just because it doesn't necessarily fuck your life up, um, which it does. Fucks your teeth up, your skin, uh, at least for me. Um, I mean, God. And I'm still hooked. Like I quit the vape for like two days. And guess what? Guess what I did? I went out and bought another one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to beat it. But I got to tell you, I'm, I remember the first time I ever smoked a cigarette. Never forget it. Yeah. Uh, this dude goes, actually, before I read this, the first time I ever smoked, I was 12. No, I was like 11. Yeah, I know. And my uh, friend at the time, his name was Garrett. We were hanging out at the house and he just goes, he's like, you know what I really want to try? Cigarettes. And I was like, cigarettes. He's like, yeah. I go, I was like, dude, we're 11. And he was like, I know. I said, all right. And then we went on our neighbor's porch, this dude who smoked, and uh, we stole some of his cigarettes from him. Yeah, I'll never forget it. Actually, believe it or not, I, I hit it. I coughed a shit ton, and then I got a boner. I know. And then I was afraid to smoke. I was like, smoking gives you boners. And, you know, when you're a young, a young lad, you know, those things just out of nowhere, dude. You know, <laughs> just be sitting there. Next thing you know, you got a, a stiffy. But anyways, I used to think smoking would cause you. you know, so anyways, I didn't smoke again until I was 17. And then after that, it was like a wrap. I was just hooked. I, I don't know. Um, that's probably my biggest life regret. I've got a bunch, but I'm going to start with that one. About to put the link out here soon. Um, we're going to go one by one. We're not going to do like the panel like we used to. I think it's a little easier. Uh, I'll drop the link for you guys. Uh, anybody who wants to hop on, should be a good time. This dude Christian, he goes, several times a day, I think to myself, if I could just go back to when I was X years old, I would have done things different. Yeah, I guess that just comes down to you live and you learn. But yeah, I think about that. I don't have too many regrets, but that's probably my biggest regret. I've got more. We'll get, we'll get there. Get some people on here first. Uh, we already got that one. What's up, Jenny? Uh, bah -bah, Donatello slap a fellow. What's up, brother? Oh, it looks like there's a football game on tonight. I'm not big on sports. I never know. You know, I worked at a bar forever. People would be like, is the game on? I'd be like, 
what game? You know how many games there are in this fucking world? <laughs> like, I don't know. There's a chess match on, you know what I mean? What's up, Alan? How you doing? How you doing? I think I saw Broken Gimp. I haven't seen you in here in a long, long time. Hope you're doing well. All right, we got our first guy coming in here. Hopefully, he's got some good juicy shit for us. All right, Kevin, you're live, brother. Can you hear me? Hey, how's it going? Going good, man. So, um, what's going on? How old are you and where are you hailing from, brother? Uh, I'm 33 years old from Mexico right now. All right, all right. So um, you saw today's topic: bad life choices and regrets. Uh, if you feel, if you want, if you want to share something, is there anything that maybe a mistake you've done or something that you regret in your life? You want to uh -huh. share with everybody? Um, you know what? I, I did pretty good for myself for most of my life. I think one life choice about regret is I did. Uh, I probably doing coke for like two months straight. You know. Oh, that'll get you. Yeah. That'll yeah. get you. I've never see I've yeah. never done I've never done coke. Is it like is it as addicting as they say it is? Like when you um, say two months straight, do you mean like every single day? Every yeah, I did it for like every single day for two months straight. It was uh it was a pretty bad moment. Then I stopped doing it and I don't I barely do it right now. But it is it can be addicted. Uh, especially if you if you have an addictive personality, it's definitely more addictive than weed. That's for sure. Yeah, because what what do you smoke weed at all, or have you ever smoked weed? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, I don't do it that often anymore. Um, no, I do it just once in a while. Yeah, because I was gonna say I've had because I made a bold claim saying that weed was addictive, and um, which I know there's no like withdrawals. I get that because I don't really smoke much. Um, uh -huh. here and there, but you know, I had to say to myself at one point, I don't know how often you smoked before, but I smoked every single day for like years. Like I'm yeah, talking, yes. I'm talking a long time. And, um, yeah. I, and I, I got to thinking, I'm like, maybe I am addicted to this, at least to the way it makes me feel, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. it makes you yeah. feel pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I think that's very common. I, I think a lot of people smoke weed every day and they do it for years. Um, it can be addictive. That was myself too, you know. Um, but I don't think it's, it's it's a soft drug, you know. No, I get it. Do you don't? Um, well, that's good. You don't have too many regrets in life. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, working from the states, everything is too expensive there, and uh, living in Mexico at the moment, you know. So uh, here, the money. Just uh, making dollars and spending in pesos is a little bit smarter than being there, you know. Oh, that's wait. So let me. So wait. Let me get this straight. What do you mean spending it in pesos? You mean you going back to Mexico, or how, what do you mean by that? I work for a U.S. company and I live in Mexico. Oh, so your money is just whoosh, way uh, yeah. extended. Oh, smart man. Okay. I yeah, like and style. I and I'm like you, man. You always say, uh, "What do you say? You say a uh, a man with no bills is a rich man." Damn and I right. only have, yeah, I only have my cell phone bill. And uh, what else? I have no car insurance. No, uh, yeah, so no, no car payment. Yeah, I pay like a very little rent, and uh, yeah, I have very little bills. So most of the money I can save it, you know. So I'm in a pretty good position right now. All right, man. Well, that's awesome, dude. Um, any last choices? I'm kind of doing like speed rounds of this. Um, yeah, 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 definitely. You got uh, anything else you want to say before I let you go? No, man. I was wondering if you ever tried any hard drugs. No. So the worst thing, well, in my personal opinion, I think alcohol is probably the worst. Um, uh, just in my, it, just in my opinion. I think alcohol is mm -hmm. probably, but then again, I've never done, you know, heroin or Coke. I've never done anything. LSD? But uh, no, I, I did mushrooms once. I did mushrooms mm -hmm. once. Yeah, that was trippy shit, dude. That was like, whoa. <laughs> I basically dropped out of high school after that. I'm not kidding. It's like, <laughs> I was like, I know everything. <laughs> I see the world for what it is, you know? Um, yeah, I was, dude, I was bugging. But luckily, but for me, the alcohol thing, I never drank hard except for after my mother died about four years ago. And mm -hmm. I got to tell you, within three months, I probably made some of the worst life decisions ever. 
but I was drunk all day long. You know what I mean? Like uh, you're not really thinking, especially like uh, that was the only time I ever blacked out. And I mm -hmm. think that's probably the scariest shit ever is not remembering what you did the day before. And then when you find yeah. out, what, then when you find out what you did, you go, you go, what you did, what? But anyways, no, I never really done any hard drugs besides um, overdo it on alcohol. But I'm going to let you yeah. roll, brother. I got some other people waiting in the queue here. Uh, appreciate right, you. So good. Yeah, appreciate you hopping you. on. Yeah, keep killing it, man. Stretch that yeah, money. Same for you. All right, peace, brother. All right, we got another dude coming in here. Colt, I'm about to bring you on. Uh, oh. What's up, brother? Thanks for like. Glad you like the videos. This guy goes, weird. I smoked a Newport on and off my whole life. Never got hooked. Other drugs for sure. Cigarettes, not. Yes, yeah, some people seem to be able to do things in moderation. I can't seem to be able to do it, at least when it comes to that. Like soda, that's another regret I have. Like I drank so much soda. You know, like people get fat. Well, I imploded. Yeah, I, I did the opposite. Um, yeah, so some people implode. It's a, it's a real thing. Uh, this D Cole goes, I was six years old. First time I smoked a cigarette with some other neighbor kid. Wow. You've got me beat. All right. We got Colt coming in hot. Colt, what's up, brother? Hey Jack. How you doing, man? I'm great, man. Where you're, uh, how old are you and where are you hailing from brother? I am 31 and I hail from Gainesville, Florida. All right. You got another Florida boy in the, in the, yes, in sir. the Born so, or eight. Uh, so you saw the topic of tonight's uh, choice discussion topic thing. Is there yes, any, sir. Uh, any regrets you have in life or any bad decisions you want to share with everybody here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, nothing, nothing too new or out of the ordinary. Um, a lot of drug use back in my earlier days. And unfortunately it led to a little prison stint when I was in my early twenties, but thank little God uh, it was enough to, straighten me out so when you say prison do you mean like you did over a year or did you like do yes it? sir i did like um 18 months jesus christ so let yeah. me ask you a question if you don't mind so first of all how did you get roped up um let's we'll start with that one so how did you end up in that if you don't mind if you don't mind sharing no, absolutely man i'm an open book um it's actually a pretty crazy story um when I was 17 and I lost both my parents together simultaneously. Oh, sorry. Man. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is what it is at this point. I mean, it, it, it definitely hardened me up and, uh, you know, I was on my own since then, uh, got in with the wrong crowd. I mean, I own my own choices, but you know, I definitely, uh, entered into a new life that, you know, cause I was pretty sheltered. Uh, my dad was a cop, so I, uh, you know, didn't really have any drug experiences. I drank alcohol a few times in high school, but, you know, nothing too crazy. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, started with uh, uh, oxycodone pills. I don't know if you're familiar uh, with that. but Yeah, my, my dad ruined his entire life because of uh, pills like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty common story in Florida, I do believe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so you get hooked, so, so you get hooked on oxycotton. So how do you end up getting roped up and doing prison time? Um. Well, uh, I started out uh, smoking them. Ended up shooting them. Oh, um, so intravenous. Yeah. So that took me downhill pretty quick. Um, ended up going broke. You know, went through a hundred thousand dollars of my parents' settlement money. Um, I yeah, then quickly, within like a year, if that. Um, so I went broke, started stealing, um, was uh, stealing vehicles, got caught. Um, dude came out in the in the act, called the cops, went on the run, um, got busted. Um, I actually surprisingly was able to get a probation sentence at first with rehab, got and actually finished the rehab. And then I got back on shortly after. So then they violated, uh, you know, or I ended up going to, to prison because it was a part of the term that if I violated the terms of probation, that I'd get sent to prison. 
Jesus Christ. Yeah, but seven years clean now. Hey, congratulations, man. Round of applause. That's awesome, dude. Yes, it's not, e it's yeah. not easy to do, man. Even, even with me, like, because I've had a felony before. Worst thing yeah. ever. Thank God I didn't do any time. Um, right. But, you know, they set it up to where if I fucked up probation, I was going to do a minimum year. And yeah. I was, that was like my worst fear was like messing. Yeah. Don't mess this up. Um, I never didn't, I didn't. And you know what? I was an asshole on Friday nights. I knew I had <laughs> Saturday and Sunday and I would drink on Friday nights. Yeah. Cause I, cause I knew <laughs> I had, and, and you know what? I look back at it and I was like, damn, that was risky. But, um, but yeah, so I know what it's like to at least go through the court system, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, dude, I don't know cuz uh, there's some people that go to prison and it looks like you came out and you're fine, but there's some people that goes in and it's like it they're, yeah, they, they're never okay. They, they let it become them. It's like the whole perse personality, the whole yep, their persona. Gangster yep. thing, better criminal type thing. Yeah. No, I yep. went the complete different route. I never wanted to go back. I mean, I I, I got pretty blessed. I I feel like God was definitely uh on my side. Uh everything that could have gone the best for me kind of happened. And that was another thing that kind of, you know, gave me a new perspective on things. You know, I, I got sent to a real like low risk, real low security uh, unit, you know, so I wasn't around like a bunch of killers or, you know, anything like that. Um, still suck. Still was, you know, not nice having your freedom and everything. And uh, yeah, I was, I was a pretty, you know, uh, screwed up individual at a point, but uh it's actually funny you know that i saw your thing and i got to thinking about it and um you know even though i've been clean for so long when you get yourself into a situation with the felonies and everything like that i lost my license you know it's hard to climb out of that hole i mean you got to be disciplined you, you you can't mess around at all or you're not gonna you yeah, know and, climb that and, hole, man. and i and i think one of the worst things too because i didn't do prison time but when you go to get a job and shit Oh my mm -hmm. God. Like the, especially yeah. when it's fresh, when it's fresh, yeah. those like two Ooh. years afterwards, it's almost like it pops up. Like they're sending them out. Like, yeah, I don't even go to a <laughs> job interview and these people are sending it out. Like, uh, like, a you know, one of those wanted posters or some shit. Like they're right. just tipping <laughs> off every, um, Oh, this guy wants to work in the restaurant business. Like let every restaurant know that I've been arrested. Um, yeah, man, it can seem like that for sure. Yeah, yeah but then after a, right. a but then after a while, I just wouldn't say anything, and then it would be like no problem, like never yeah. have an issue. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know if that's. It sounds like you've been doing well, but thanks for coming on and sharing, dude. I'm, I got to keep moving through. We got some other people in here. Yeah, I'll just uh, say I'll just say one more last thing if I could. Of course. Uh, of like course. I said, you know, it took a while to climb out of that hole, and I can gladly say that uh, for the first time uh, tomorrow, me and my wife and my son are moving into our first own place. Wow! Congratulations, man. Look at you. Yes, sir. You did prison yes, time sir. seven years clean. It's got a wife and a kid. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Good. God shit. is good, man. I appreciate you coming on here, dude, and sharing that. Yes, sir. No problem. You have a great night. Thanks, Cole. You too, brother. All right. Thanks for the two bucks here from Jeremiah. Really appreciate that. Stanley Cup equals insanity. Yeah, I like hockey. I used to do some pond hockey shit. Uh, that was fun. I never did like a real... Like, I... Uh, all right, well, <sighs> Dylan's blowing the whole stream. We're going to go ahead and boot him off before he ruins our entire night. I'm going to put the link in here one more time, go through some of your comments here while we're waiting for people in the queue. Oh, this guy, Devo, says, I've been doing karate and kung fu and gymnastics since I was seven. I'm 56 and look about 34. Wow, I'm the opposite of you. Never did any smoking, drugs, not even aspirin, alcohol, just distilled water, and uh, bee pollen. Hey, good for you, man. That takes a lot of discipline, dude. You know, when you're messing with the Japanese like that, though, you got to become super zen, you know. You got to be, you know, 15% Buddha, you know. Like, you got to really dial it in. So now we got another person popping in. We got Robert coming in here. Robert, my boy, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. All right, man. What's going on? How old are you and where are you hailing from, brother? 
Oh, I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how old are you and where are you hailing from, my man? I'm 42, and I hail from Columbus, Georgia. All right. We got a Georgia boy in here. <laughs> Georgia, Georgia. So um, you saw tonight's topic. Is there uh, any regrets or bad decisions you've made in your life that you'd like to share with the good people on the Internet here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, my regret was uh, not moving out, moving out home soon, basically. <laughs> oh, uh, moving, like, move, like, moving out of your parents? Yeah. Well, how long, how, uh, were you late bloomer? How long did it take you to move out? Uh, it took me until uh, I was 36 years old. Oh, wow. But you know <laughs> what, though? Hey, you know what? Honestly... And there's a lot of cultures where that's that's almost normal, you know. Like my neighbors are uh, Middle Eastern, and they don't move out until they get married. And if it takes them till they're thirty or you know whatever, they that's how long it takes them. Um, so that's kind of normal. But I mean, that's not too bad. What well, you say? You're 42 now, so you've been out out of the house about seven years, six years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Hey, man. And that's not too bad if that's really your biggest regret in life. That, that ain't nothing, man. I support that all day. Yes. I wish I could live with my parents. I guess I could live with my dad, but kind of. He would live with me. But that's cool, man. Um, so why do you think you regret that so much? Um, just the way well, people treated you? Well, I could have uh, done. And, you know, if I, if I hadn't waited... Uh, Waited too long, but you know, probably could have done more. You know. Well, you think you think maybe uh, you were possibly kind of I don't want to say coddled or like uh, you know you think you maybe started late, like learning just basic adult necessities, like you know paying the what you know certain bills and all that. You think that was like a big factor, maybe? Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, part of when I was younger, you know. I was basically a mama's boy, so. <laughs> hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. I was a mama's boy. I miss her. Yeah. Hey, man. Well, that's that's cool. Um, hey, I'm having a real hard time hearing you, though. I'm really sorry. Maybe we'll try and get you back on here. Okay. Um, you're, you're cutting out in and out real bad. But I really appreciate you stopping on, man. Thank you. All right. Yeah, he was really hard to hear. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, so anybody wants to jump on, Geo, I'm coming to you right now. He's waiting in the queue. Uh, thanks for the three bucks from uh, Black Cat. Really appreciate that, man. All right, we got Geo in the on yeah, the stream up, here. Uh, Geo, real quick, do you have me playing in the background? If you do, can you put that no, on mute? My bad, my bad. That's you. You're good. Up there. You're good. Yeah, just put that on mute. Is it better? Much better. All right, Gio, how old are you and where are you hailing from, my man? I'm good, man. I'm Gio. I'm down here in uh, San Antonio. It's down in San Antonio. Another Texas boy coming in. Yeah, high. sir. So uh, just based on the topic, um, I mean, I'm four years sober now, but I went through eight years where I was doing meth and all sorts of drugs. Jesus. Yeah. I had never ended up in a jail or anything um, due to the drug habits. But, I mean, I did remain homeless for, like, a year and a half. Jesus. And uh, I want to say, like, right at the end of 2019, my girlfriend had stabbed me. And oh, come on. Yeah, no, for real. So I'm paralyzed in, in my left arm. Oh, shit, and, really? Yeah. Wow. And I didn't have any insurance or nothing like that. And eventually... Uh, I talked to um, the VA and they ended up working with me to the point where I had some health insurance. So I got right after that. And I mean, I haven't done any drugs or anything. I just uh, drink some beers and, you know, I sit at home for the most part today, but 
Last year has been my best year. Like, I finally got my own place, but I, I can't hang out with nobody, you know. Well, I mean, you, you can, just not anybody. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, the friends that, that I could hang around, like, I just did laundry yesterday, bro, and I had people offering me, you know. You're just, you're like, shit. you're like, dude, I'm just trying to have some clean clothes and stay clean. Like, chill out. <laughs> For real. No, that's fucked up. He was up. just chilling in the laundry room, dealing out, and I'm like, damn, bro. So, you so know? quick question here. Congratulations on, on your success of getting out of that. That's nuts. Um, so let me ask you a question. You, um, would you say I did a whole video on like a homelessness recently? And would you say it's pretty accurate that majority of people that are homeless is, is basically oh, yeah, no, absolutely. Because they're on drugs? I, I would say a good 80%, 85% of people that are homeless, they, they want to be homeless. Yeah, like I, I figured. They're, they're not trying to get help. You know, they just want to feed off the system however they can. There, there are a few good people, like, that, that are really trying to, like, fell on hard times, like you said. But the vast majority of them are just trying to get whatever they can get, however they can get it, you know? Yeah, because, I mean, just from what you said, and real quick, uh, we're going to do a speed. Uh, Damien and everybody waiting in the queue, just be patient. I'm going to get to you guys. Um yeah, I figured that as much, but also what I wanted to know is so so when you're when you're out there doing meth and all that, right? You said you were homeless, but then you told me you had a girlfriend. So, you know, a lot of people cuz I made a lot of dating videos, stuff like that, and a lot of people seem to have a hard time getting a girlfriend. How how is it that when you're addicted to meth and all this stuff, you're able to still get a girlfriend? Is that because she's also uh, well Whenever you are uh, doing drugs, though, you get into these groups of people that will like everybody feeds on each other. So, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody can get five dollars and throw into the pot. And I mean, you there's girls in the groups, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's still not hard to get laid. Really, the druggies, I, I find. I mean, they, they it's cheap, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you can still get it. Okay. All right. I'm so. just curious. I'm just curious because I've made a joke before where I was like, you know, I've seen homeless people with girlfriends, you know, so it can't be <laughs> that difficult. You know, I mean, I obviously it's not a quality um <laughs> choice, but like no no know, no. T today yeah. it's much different for me because like the girls that I want, I'm not good enough to have because I need to better myself more. Mm. But the girls I can have, I don't want because You'll end up you homeless know. again. Yeah, we, well, I mean, yeah. they, not, not even if they're homeless, just they, they still live at home with parents. They're just drug addicts still, you know. Okay. They I don't want you. to better themselves. So yeah, I'm just it's... like, I don't talk to nobody no more, and I just do my own thing. That yeah, was like it's... four years ago, obviously. I've, I've been single this whole time. I got my own apartment, got my own car. Hey, You know, I pay dude. all my bills. That's and awesome, man. It's just kind of leveled out now, so. That's a huge I mean, accomplishment, dude. Not many people are able to go through – do all that, whether it was your wrongdoing or not to get out of that though is oh, no, it was tough. Like thank God for the VA because that's the only reason I got my medications and the psychiatry help and all that stuff. So that right. helped well, out a lot. Really, like anybody really, who's struggling with addiction, like really needs to talk to a therapist and figure out why, why are they doing these things? And they have to genuinely want to do better. Like they're not going to do better sense. if they don't want to, nobody can force that in. So. That makes all the sense in the world, man. Hey, thanks for coming on, Gio. I appreciate you sharing that, dude. Good luck with that arm. And yes, uh, I really you appreciate you sharing that, man. You too, brother. All right, we got five bucks from Alberto here. What's up, Alberto? How you doing, man? Biggest regret is not being able to spend enough time with certain people. Keep it real, Jack. Love your vids. RLP. Damn right. Yeah, that's something too, man. As you get older, you know, now that I'm getting older, it's like, I got to literally make appointments to hang out with friends. Like we got to schedule shit. And um, yeah, I guess you got to just get good at being alone too. That's something uh, that I've had to get used to. All right, we got Damien coming in here. All right, Damien, my boy. What's going on, man? How you doing? I'm good. Hey, do, do me a favor. If I'm playing in the background, can you mute the background? The YouTube and I'm just running on the, on the studio right now. Okay, I think we're good now. Is that better? Much better. All right. 
So what's up, Ben? How, uh, how old are you and where are you hailing from? Yeah, uh, 48 from uh, Miami. I'm right next to you. All right. You're right down the way. That's awesome, man. Right down the way. So uh, when you say Miami, are you like uh, South Beach or North Beach chilling or are you inland? Are you like I'm in, actually- uh, I'm in, I'm in Brickell. Okay. Yeah. Hi. You're in, you're in the hot spot. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of the hub. It's, everything goes on around here. Oh, that's awesome, man. So real quick, just cause you're on Brickell, wh- what is an apartment on Brickell for, to paint a picture <laughs> for everybody in the, um, you don't have to answer this. I know, but, I have, I'm, I'm an open book, man. I'll give you any information. Yeah. So, so Brickell is basically like the strip, like, Besides South Beach being like on the beach, the next best spot in Miami is Brickell. So if you don't yeah. mind me asking, what is what is something like a one-bedroom run on Brickell? It's got to be bananas. Yeah, you're, a, a one-bedroom is going to run you probably about 6500 bucks, And then a two-bedroom a two is going to run you about 80, 88, 9000 Wow, it's 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 gone it's gone absolutely insane here. But you got to understand. But it also depends on the building. So, like, I live in a building that's a condo hotel. So it's it's kind of a it's it's a mix. So you have a hotel life along with the condo. So we have you know valet parking. We have uh, three restaurants. We have a rooftop lounge. We have you know DJs on Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the pool at the lounge. So there's just like, you just live the life of living in a hotel. So you have that, that type of life. So that's going to be a little bit more costly versus a traditional tower and brickle, which is just going to be more traditional residences. And you're just going to have the basic amenities. Mm, okay. So, uh, do me a favor. Whatever is on that background. Yeah. Can you completely like mute it completely? Let me try... Here, do, hold on. Yeah, yeah, do that real fast, and I'm going to read on. this. Uh, put you on mute for a second until you figure that out. Uh, Relo goes, Jack, I'm homeless, uh, and his teeth have gone to shit. Have two jobs at the moment. Never been in jail, so that's not holding me back. But honestly, man, if I had three wishes, uh, it would be that my mom. Okay. Well, yeah. You know, something about the homeless community, I – so I've talked to a couple homeless people and interviewed them. They always say the same thing. Like, uh, like the homeless people are like, if, if they see another homeless person, they look for their teeth. And if they're not missing any teeth, a true homeless person will go, yeah, he's not really homeless. Like they don't consider you really homeless until you're missing teeth. I don't know. That's just my inside scoop. All right, Damien, let's try this again. Go ahead and try talking for a second. Yeah. Let me know if it's a little bit better. That's a lot bit better. Okay, so you know the topic of tonight's show, regrets, bad life choices. Is there anything you'd like to share with the good people of uh, YouTube here tonight? Yeah, you know, so uh, am I clipping still or am I all right? Uh, it's a little echo, but it's it's manageable. Oh, it's because, it's just because there's ceramic floors in this house, man. It's, it's ridiculous. No, it's because you're living the Playboy lifestyle. I get it. <laughs> yeah. No, so, um, uh, you know, I just, I don't have any regrets. And, and, and I'm going to, and I'm going to back up on this. So, uh, you know, from the age of 15 to 22, I, I was a, just a meth junkie. Uh, I did a ton of below, a ton of below, a ton of math. Uh, it just consumed my life and things were really hard going through my teens. I sold marijuana, you know, I did everything on that side. Uh, you know, I've had two DUIs. I mean, I've just had all these things go on in my life, but I don't regret any of it because it's all a learning experience. Mm. And, you know, um, I've been a financial advisor. I manage money for the last 18 years. And, you know, going through all those experiences allowed me to get my shit back together to become who I am, to move to this position that I'm that I'm at now. And, and I've been here. And so I just I don't believe in regrets. I just think regrets just take you down a path where you're you're not satisfied with yourself or the decisions that you made. But I think that every decision you make in life is a learning experience. And you learn from that and, and move on to the next level. And so, I mean, I've, I've, I've traveled all around the world. I've been everywhere. I, 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 I guess I could say I have everything I want now. You know, things have been great, but 
it's just taken so many mistakes in my life to 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 learn and and get to where I'm at now. So I just sometimes when I hear people say, "Oh my God, I regret everything I did," it's just like no, it's just like you 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 don't learn from your mistakes. You never do. You know, even when your parents, right? They're like, you know, oh, don't put a bunch of money on the credit card. You'll never be able to pay it off, or you know, don't do this. It's, who the hell listens to your parents, right? You ignore <laughs> them, and you're like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and, and make my own mistakes, and then you do, and then that's how you learn. And then, of course, they always tell you, see, you didn't listen to me. Well, yeah, fuck no, because if I did, and then I wouldn't even be where I'm at right now. And so, uh, yeah, I just I, the regret word doesn't work, but but I've made every freaking mistake, like every one. I've gone to jail. I've done everything. You know, it's just. Uh, it's just one of those things that you you have to put in life to 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 move to the next level. Uh, you know, even every girl that I've been with, right? Every girl I've had a lot of shitty relationships, and each one of them, it, it, I don't regret any of them. Like each one of them taught me something that I realized the next one that I didn't want from the previous one. So it wasn't a regret. So mm. it's, it's all about growth. That's the easiest way that I can put it to anybody. You know, I would never be where I am today without making every one of those mistakes that I made in my past. And I'm very happy about every one of them that I've made. You know, they look like shit if I put them on a resume or if somebody wanted to you know, yeah. look and go, dude, you were this and that. But also the other thing I'll say is being 48, I made a lot of those mistakes when I was younger. And you can recover from those mistakes when you're young, whether it's drugs, like losing your teeth. I saw some comment, you know, losing your teeth or looking like shit or, you know, smoking and all these things that just break your body down and you start to look really bad. Even when you're young, if you start to look bad, if you stop early, your body can recover. But when you're older, you can't recover from these mistakes, whether they're financial mistakes, whether they're health mistakes, whether they're, you know, whether they're any type of mistake, you know, a, a traditional job mistake or anything that you do, you know, criminal mistake, you know, all of that. It's harder to recover when you're older, but but if you can get, if you can get it out of your system or even just, as you said, right, a couple of years, things fall off your, you know, things move out of the way after a couple of years, right? Just when you're coming out of your situation, it doesn't look good right away, but you wait a couple of years. Hey, Damien, Damien, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, you're cutting out real bad. I totally agree. I put you on mute. So just sit there. I guess just listen for a moment. Uh, I agree with everything you said. And um, when I say regret and bad life choices, like I agree with you. Like I, I only regret the teeth thing because I'm 34 and the amount of smoking and shit I did, like I've had, I have three fake teeth. I'm 34. You know what I mean? And I think one of them was from getting jumped. Honestly, I don't think that was from cigarettes. That was from getting punched in the face about a hundred times, you know, right place, wrong time type of thing. But, um, I agree with everything you said. I wish you weren't cutting out cause you're saying some real good shit, but I'm going to have to get you out of here. I'm gonna get this next guy on really appreciate you coming in here. 48 you look awesome i'm glad you made all the mistakes you did because you're big chilling if i ever run into you in brickle man don't don't be afraid to say hi later brother all right we got mojo coming in here uh, mojo if you got me playing on the background go ahead and mute the background for me i don't think i do I oh you're golden all right give me one mm -hmm. moment here I got two. I got to thank this guy for the two big ones. Drewski. Ooh. He goes, biggest regret was not quitting drinking years ago. Yeah, that's that's a big one, dude. I I too many people on the drinks. And I, I got it's I got I got one more to get through. We got a hundred big ones from downtown. Thank you, man. I really appreciate wow. that. Hold on one second. There we go. I know people love when I do that. So I figured I'd just get one out of the way. Thank you for the hundred bucks, dude. That's big, big shit. All right. So, uh, where are you, how old are you guys and where are you two hailing from? 38, uh, and down in the lowlands of Ohio, man. All right. He's, he's I'm 33. 33. Okay. You guys, uh, you guys an item there? Or yeah, guys... dude. Yeah. We're, I got, do I claim her, dude? I claim her, dude. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It looks like you're, you're chilling. Is what are you in like a vintage store or something? What's going yeah, on man, here? Yeah, man, actually, I messaged you earlier this week, man. We're, uh, you know, long time. Yes. Listeners, first, first time callers. Yep. Um, dude, but yeah, we're in our shop in Ohio. We have a vintage store, like I say, and we kind of have a, 
correlating thing, man. The reseller, the kind of hustling, doing your own thing, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, dude, but we're in our little shop in Ohio. We got, dude, a little bit of everything. So real quick, let me ask you before we get into bad life choices and all that. Let's. Um, just because I'm a vintage. You can look behind me. Um, that's that's how I roll. I'm, I'm just, I got that's, that it, it, vintage itch. I don't know what it is. It's I the don't. it's it's the it's, an an, it's the analogness of it. It's it's the non brittleness of it. You know everything now is is designed to you know be one and done, dude. So the old stuff, mm -hmm. well, it's meant to last a long time. Um, so what I was gonna say is is uh, you guys. So are you basically one? Do you think do you, you guys are selling online? I assume too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So would you say? majority of your money comes from online or from the store in in the shop with us it's, it's about half and half Happy. because we supply a lot of the, like the vintage guys in cincinnati all the shops because we're kind of like the outskirts we're literally by a railroad track if you're if you're like a, the quintessential bum with the little stick with the, the little yeah. band pack you're gonna <laughs> find our shop but yeah. otherwise it's kind of like if you know you know you, we don't have a sign anything so like we supply a lot of the plan. dudes down in cincinnati and stuff with just bulk so they just come and load up do a lot of wholesale. But love doing the online stuff too, man. We have a YouTube channel that uh, you know kind of uh, documents all of our escapades and quintessential reseller travels, channel. You know, but yeah, uh, I've, I've I know all of them. I know I used, I used to be down that. I never made like a channel on my own or nothing like that. I just I didn't really care to because I knew when I made a channel it'd be something different. But um, yeah. I've I've been just so into it because you know I've tried getting people on the um the resale game, like people who are into it, you yeah. know, who I think would be really good at it. Cause not everyone's going to, there's certain niches like the niche you guys are in. I totally get it. But, um, so how long, I'm sorry, we're getting a little off topic here, but, uh, that's all right, I, man, we got time. We, we can, I'll, just, I'll, we can discuss vintage life decisions, you know, yeah. porcelain dolls. I love, I love it. So what I was going to say is, is how did you, how long ago did you start your resale journey? And then, How'd you go about going, I'm going to make a shot? All right. Yeah. So uh, around the, 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 the sweet time of the sweet epidemic, just the, the, the killer flu, man, mm -hmm. everything got shut down. And we, we do our own thing. I own a music academy in town where we teach a bunch of kids instruments and stuff, and she owns a hair salon. So everything got closed down, as we know, by force. Uh, and uh, we started, you know, we, we'd been supplying a bunch of people with, like, bands with clothing and stuff and uh, locally so we started kind of slinging to a lot of our a lot of our friends and built a shop in our living room um We're just like hoarding a bunch hoarding of and stuff just and... still having people come shop still having people come do that and uh it, it at one point it became just too too many people come by the house we look like we look like a crack house man people were coming yeah. in and out with bags all hours of the night Trash getting bags, stuff. so we were, we were bag we hust had, hustling to make bag. that money but in the middle of the height of everything, we said, you know, be smart. Let's open a, a brick and mortar store where everything's closed down. Real Nobody smart. can go there. It's going to be dope. And we did. And uh, it worked out, man. We've we've expanded a couple times since then. It was but, almost uh, accidentally. Like we tripped yeah. into it. We're like, we need more space. Let's get this space. It was a good deal. Then you we fall forward. You trip forward. You trip, trip forward, forward. Yep. into these things. Yeah, but uh, go with the flow, man. And again, just willing to take a risk and not depending on some, you know, stimulus check or some bullshit to flow in to get me. No, nah, dude, we we hustled the whole time, man. Opened gotcha. a store uh, where, you know, doing deals, going out there and hunting stuff, dude. It never stopped, man. So, yeah, that's that's something that happened to me with it. And a lot of the stuff behind me is when I would buy something that I knew I was going to resell, I would, you know, the high end shit, I would put it out for display in the house versus like, because I have a bin system. Uh, people who are on my Patreon have seen it. But like I got like a bin system that I haven't showed you guys. But it'll be like A1, A2, A3, B1, B2. And I just have bins for days in my back shed. And they're just packed with shit. Anything that's like 50 bucks or less is in those bins. But then I would store shit. And I would even hang stuff on the walls. Put it in the, the things behind me. I, I just put it around the house. And those were all the the high end items, and also I used to post shit on Instagram, and people would come by the crib. I stopped doing that just because I was like, I can't keep giving my address out. You know, man. You, you know. Yeah. So, so I was doing yeah. the same shit you guys were doing. My house turned into like, I have too much stuff. Oh, um, honey, you too have much stuff. 
Lord. The yeah. stuff. Yeah. So anyways, that's awesome. Uh, anytime I'm near you guys, I'm definitely going to have to swing by or if I could check out, if you guys got a website, I'd love to check oh, it yeah, out. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, man. We got, we got all the, the social facets. Dude, what do you got behind you, man? What's the, what's all the little choice oh, nugs behind so, you? So, so that's my first like editing computer I ever had. It's just a Mac. Aww. And then that's my grandfather's TV from God knows what year. The old that's, Trinitron, man. The old Sony yep. Trinitron. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a, a yellow TV. I've never seen a yellow one. I've seen red oh, ones, but never a that. yellow one. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's, yep. And then above, above it, up at the top over here, just a bunch of boom boxes and shit. But like, there's so much stuff hanging around my house. I'd have to literally do a fucking tour. But anyways, uh, please, hey, I want to see that, dude. I need to see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty. Bad life choices, any regrets? If you guys want to share any, feel free. I got a bunch of people in the queue here, so. Dude, hey, man, it's it's, it's the same song and dance as everybody. But, you know, the last dude, he was he was spot on with a lot of stuff, man. Where it was it was the same thing for me, man. My early twenties, uh, man, just addicted to Xanax heavily, dude. Uh, Living the rock star life, dude. Going out and playing gigs all night. Got you obviously. He said he hated. He probably would have hated himself now. Oh, like, I had he's a, like, yeah. I want to punch myself. Yeah, it's dude, so annoying. I had full intentions on joining the Twenty Seven Club, and you know, uh, no. at all costs, man. You know, did not happen because I was not cool enough to do that. Uh, tried, <laughs> my, tried my, tried my damnedest, dude. Uh, ended up, you know, when you're playing those late shows, dude, you're always just, just targeted for the police man so got arrested uh for a dui within two months i got arrested for another dui so i had two duis on t- that's little the DUI best little that's, DUI not- sandwich. that's the best, little that's DUI the best sandwich. dude it was just, well, well and they sent me to this um, program and they're like talking they didn't know i had a second one i was just doing the the, fuck, the treatment for the first one and they're like oh you don't want to get a second one that's where it gets really bad and i'm like oh shit I'm, I'm, I'm fucked. Uh, they, they didn't even, you know, oh man, it was bad. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Has something really sweet to say. Never wear dirty fingerless gloves. So fuck you, David. Hey, David, David. All, dude, always wear dirty fingerless gloves. Dude, you don't know. You don't know what's up, man. You the type know. of life I'm, I'm, I got a vintage store next to the railroad tracks. How do you think I'm bro, supposed honestly, to do Bro, right? I'm, I'm out there. I'm out there shoveling coal in the fucking caboose, bro. And you're out here yeah, yeah. my fingerless gloves, man. You know, well, hey, well, you yeah. hey, you were the true, you were the quintessential musician. I don't expect anything less. That's what I'm That's saying, right. man. Come on, hey, hey, so, hey, and you can always hey. give me some gloves, bro. I'll, I'll resell. Chop, you know what? Yeah. chop, yeah, chop that up with bad life choices, dude. Exactly, dude. The, 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 right. Yes, add it in with the riddled Xanax addiction, the the in jail fingerless gloves. There you go. It uh, right. sums up your entire life. That's, now we're here, dude. Now we're. That should have been the name of your sh- the name of your shop. Should have been fingerless gloves and more. Dirty, 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 yeah. dirty, yeah. dirty. All right, dirty. all right. I gotta kick you guys off. We're gonna have to talk on the phone because uh, I gotta Definitely, get geeky. I gotta get geeky hey. vintage with you. Yeah, dude, hit me up on Instagram, dude. Absolutely, man. So, just send me one more message. Just to be like, I'm the guy, and I'm gonna go yes. Hey, all right, I'm gonna let you guys I'm, go. I'm dirty gloves. I'm dirty fucking gloves. Dirty Remember gloves. me. Hey, dirty gloves, dirty gloves, mo- Mojo, the dirty glove man. I love it. Hey, All right. I love you, hey. Jack, dude. Hey, have uh, a blast tonight, dude. We'll see you soon, brother. Bye. God damn. All right, later, guys. Those are cool people. I like them. Thanks for the two bucks from Dig Deeper. Just tell people to put headphones on. Yeah, the Ed. I, I'll, we're 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 working through the kinks, guys. Okay, we're gonna make it work. Thank you for the two dollars and the advice. We got four, five big ones coming in uh, from downtown. From Rihanna, my biggest regret is going to school for something I thought would impress my family and make a lot of money instead of something I enjoy. (sighs) You and too many other people. Um, I think that's a huge one, though. I I tried going to college only because my mother did a prepayment program when I was three years old. Um, and I had to, you know, tell her, look, I'm not doing school, which she would totally back me. She was like, I'm surprised you even went for three months. I, so it was kind of like we were, I was scared to let her down. And then she was also like, don't waste my money. But anyways, we got, uh, thanks for the five bucks. And well, hopefully it's not too late to start doing something you love, Rihanna, cause it's still possible. And it was got Richard in here. Richard, can you hear me, brother? 
I can. All right, man. So uh, how old are you and where are you hailing from? Oh, the, the age question. Uh, it hurts a little to say, but I, I've made it further than some people I know. Uh, 56 uh, from Detroit. All right, Detroit in the building, man. I got a bunch of family in uh, Novi and um, um, uh, Ferndale. If you're sure. any, any fabulous idea. Ferndale, yeah, I'm yeah. actually in Detroit. You know, a lot of times people say they're from Detroit. Yeah, they really mean the outskirts of the city, but I'm I'm actually in Southwest Detroit, about oh, a so mile and a half from downtown. So, so you uh, born and raised uh, yeah. Michigan native? Yes, sir. Uh, All right. I was born here on the west side of Detroit. I uh, spent my most of my life as my residence here. Uh, in one of my careers, I traveled a lot. I've had three distinct careers in my in my lifetime. Um, so yeah, uh, so for a while, I was on the road for you know most of the year uh, for several years. Uh, I was a, a, a roadie. I traveled with uh, various uh, uh, artists, uh, you know, as a set carpenter. So that was a that was a cool gig for a young man. Any any like. I was, any big big bands that we might know of that you traveled with? Uh, yeah, probably OJ's, Whispers, Delves, uh, Mary Blige, Boys to Men. Oh wow, um, shit, Boys yeah, to Men. Yeah, yeah, Damn. it was in the it was in the nineties, man. You know, um, Lady Central, probably. Uh, yeah, there were a lot of uh, <laughs> there were a lot of interesting uh, things. Uh, one tour that I was on, uh, we had a. a uh, yeah, women would do the darndest things to get backstage. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so we'd say, well, come back uh, with uh, an apparatus. Keep it YouTube friendly uh, and uh, do a little show in the back of the bus. And, you know, you're in. And, no way. Uh, yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, serious. Uh, and, uh, you know, by the end of the tour, we had this big stinky bag uh, luggage of uh, filled with uh, apparati. Uh, oh yeah. So yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. Fortunately for me, I, I was with a, a a pretty well uh grounded group of people uh cuz things can get really out of control in in that environment. Uh but I was uh I was with a good grounded group of people as I tell the story about the apparatuses. But uh but they weren't substance users, right? Okay. Um, you know, we 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 had uh tour movies that we well, I can't even tell you how many times I saw The King of New York. I mean, this is when you had it on VCR, uh, videotape. Oh, right? VHS, VCR, yeah. VCR, yeah, VHS, yeah. Um, it's, and, uh, you know, one tour there were uh, uh, rollerblades, another one there were mountain bikes. It was just like we, there was always something with each each tour that we kind of did. But I, I wasn't with a heavy party uh, group. We smoked weed, smoked a lot of weed. Well, that's standard every day, you know, but uh, I mean, when you're working for rock, rock stars and, you know, big bands, it's kind of comes with the job, I would assume. Well, you know, um, I, I mean, I was a pothead long before before that, but uh, oh yeah, you know, uh, I didn't have a problem. I see, I never really looked at at at, at weed as being addictive. Uh, when I had to stop, I just stopped, um, and it was because I moved into a job that uh, I was subject to drug testing, and they did air tests. Makes so, all sense in the world. So, so I just stopped. You know, I mean, it was no big deal. I used to smoke weed every day. Now I drink Metamucil every day. So <laughs> nice. You know, so, uh, uh, so topic of discussion, bad life choices, regrets. Is there one particular that you'd like to share with everybody here? Well, I, I could I could list a series of, of women that I uh, <laughs> that I regret, although they all did leave a little something useful in their wake. Um I'd probably go with two. One real quick one. I wish I'd spent more time with my mom. Um, uh, you cut out a little bit. You said you wish you spent more time with your mom. Yeah, I wish I'd spent more time with my uh, with my mom uh, in the probably last ten years of her life or so. Um, you know, I was busy doing my own thing and uh, raising kids and doing all that stuff, and really should have spent more time with her. Now, I, I was fortunate when she got ill. Um, she came to live with me. And so when, Oh, she that's, passed, that's good. I mean, yeah. it's bad, but it's well, good. It, it was the hardest thing I ever dealt with. I was with my mother when she passed and kind of poetic, really, you know, she was with me for my first breath and I was with her for her, for last. her last. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, that was a blessing, but I wish I'd spent more time because that last couple of weeks we talked about things that we never talked about. You know? Oh, that's and awesome. So that was, yeah, it was, it was, it was cool. Um, but something a little more, you know, 
based for everybody else. I, I would say, especially, you know, I, it doesn't really matter what age you are. Pursue your dreams. I, I wish that I had pursued uh, my dream uh, much more, um, much longer. Because um, actually the roadie thing was just a substitution for being on stage myself. I was going to um, say those guitars behind you. Is that anything to do with your dream? No. Um, this one here was my COVID project. Mm. Uh, I, I built that one. And then uh, these two I bought. I play, but that's just for me. No, man, I'm a stand-up. Um, no way. Yeah. I, I still you, get out there. You, you know, still go up? I do open mics, man. You know, um, I, it's it's fun because, you know, stand-up's really a young young dude's game, really. Um I mean, I mean, go. I mean, it it is and it isn't at the same time because I feel like the best standups don't become good until they're like forty, you know, or older. Well, so life like experience, right? Yeah, you got so, something to, something to talk about. When I first started stand up, I was twenty three. I literally did dick and ball jokes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> like, I didn't have much to talk about. I mean, I guess I could have talked about the felony and other things, which I did talk about other stuff. Um, but now that I'm older, it's a lot easier because I could come in and really, sure. you know, say some. Uh, that's awesome, though, dude. But, you know, eventually right. down the line, maybe I'll have you come open for me. Just yeah, as, that'd be, uh, that'd be, that'd be wonderful. That'd One be day, wonderful. you know. But hey, uh, you know what? Who doesn't like a thick, purple, veiny dick joke every now and then? Right? No, you got to have some dick and ball jokes here and there. I mean, come on now. You got to. I mean, yeah. seriously. I actually was going to say about the. Um, about the uh uh and i agree with you i'm also guilty of n of giving up on myself luckily i came back and i did it and i stuck with it but before i've given up a couple times you know to the point where i was gonna go just do a normal uh, just a regular job i was just like i literally i'm not kidding you i was this close to signing up for an hvac apprenticeship this close you know, and I was so close and I, luckily I had two really great friends that both, um, very bluntly told me that you're an idiot if you go do that. And I had to listen to them. And I was like, you know what? I think you're right. I, Good. so I came back and I, so I agree with you, but I also wanted to share with, um, share with you about the mom thing, because I didn't know my mother was sick for the last five years of her life because I had moved to California and I'm an only, her only kid. Uh, I was her life. Um, a best, like everyone says I got the best mom, but my mom was definitely ranked. She was high ranking. Okay. Um, and I didn't know she was sick. She didn't tell me she didn't want to scare me, but I had moved home at almost 30 years old. Not, uh, not to her house. Um, I came back and then I found out she's sick. So I came and moved in with her and her and my dad had been divorced for like, you know, 13 years at this point. And I said, the only way, cause she got let go from her job. She was really bad. I didn't know how bad she was. And, um, so I said, the only way I can do this is I can't take care of you and dad. So dad's got to move in. And she, so next thing you know, I got my mom and my dad both in the same house again. And, you know, we had about a good year with each other and then she got real sick and then she croaked. But that was something I thought about, too, man. I was like, I was like to think that the last five years I left and then I come back just like that. And <clears throat> I can't say I regret moving to California. I didn't know she was sick. If she would have told me she was sick, I would have said, fuck everything. And I well, would have went back. She didn't tell you. Except, yep. But, uh, but there is something special about that too. With, uh, I had a stupid joke where I said, you know, my mom wiped my ass, you know, now it's my turn to wipe hers. And it's the truth. I've wiped both my parents' butts. I know it's crazy. And it's I know crazy, most people, I, 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 and I'm not saying I'm here to brag. I'm just saying you don't think about that. You don't go, Hey, one day I'm going to wipe I'm going to wipe your butt, dad, you know, and I'm going <laughs> to, and I'm going to tuck you in and everything's going to be okay. Um, but anyways, man, Hey, definitely, uh, link with me on Instagram. I'd like sure to get thing. your number. Um, and I highly encourage you to keep, just go do stand up for fun. And who knows one day, well, whenever I know eventually down the road, I'll be able to book a show. And I think it would be hilarious to anybody who follows me or comes on a live. I think it'd be so funny to put people up. Um, 
you know, even if it's just just for fun, you know, or yeah. you know, I mean, I've got a solid half hour. No, hey, I I problem. believe oh. uh, you you probably got a more solid set than I do. Put it that way, because I don't do it as much as I should. Wow. But anyways, I'm gonna let you go, Richard. I appreciate you popping on here. Definitely hit me up on Instagram. We'll chop it up. Um, thanks for coming on, man. We'll do. Take it easy. Peace. All right, we got Rihanna with another ten bucks. I really appreciate that. Student debt, worthless degree, toxic toxic relationships. Brand new financed fancy cars were my worst life choices. Well, sounds like you summed it up there. And thank you for the 10 bucks. Really appreciate that. You, you seem to be doing well enough to donate money to me. And I really appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, I think we've all learned the real hard way. Another five bucks from Midnight Boba. I appreciate you joining the Patreon, by the way, Midnight Boba. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Um, love the lives. Glad I'm having fun too. All right, we've got Ryan coming in hot. Ryan, can you hear me, brother? Yeah, I can hear you, Jack. What's happening, man? Oh, nothing, man. I'm just kicking in here talking with you guys. So uh, how old are you, and where are you hailing from, brother? So I'm 25 years old. I'm from a town called Neighborville, Illinois, but I currently kind of travel all over the Midwest and help people out with their therapy. Well, with with – with therapy like um yeah so i get the opportunity with my uh contracts to go to different places and different locations and help people out in rural areas that might not have the coverage where you would have in a big city so like uh this big storm we're having in the midwest right now i'm working with uh somebody that got a broken wrist broken hand and they got some pins put in and i uh, help them get them strong again oh nice okay so you're like a physical therapist basically or yeah are you a pretty much uh, I'm, it's called an occupational therapist. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. You know, I wanted to make a quick comment too, just about, uh, you know, I messaged you on Instagram the other day about, uh, how cool I really thought that video was about like the failures and mistakes that you've made and how far you've come along and how far you've learned. So oh, yeah. I just wanted to ho hop in here and at least let you know that, uh, face to face, oh, kind of face to face, that that was, uh, something that really stuck with me and I uh, enjoy all the content that you put out, man. I drive around a lot, and I always got a Jack video <laughs> on the on the uh, play while I'm moving. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. You're making me blush over here. Um, that's awesome. You get to travel for work. I always love that. Um, before we get into life choices and regrets and all that, uh, glad that video could help you. It's just something where I was like, you know, because I'm gonna be doing more vids like that. Kind of I, now that I don't, ha I just yesterday was my last day at my real job. So now I'm like sitting here and it's, it's started to soak in this morning. And I'm like, it's like, okay, I need to start really providing value for my, my people here. But that's like something where, you know, sometimes I put out a video and I'm like, I'm like, I don't even care if this gets a lot of views. I just feel like I would like a video like this for me to listen to. Um, so I try and do stuff like that. I, I want to do more of them. Um, just sometimes you, I go, man, am I really going to put that out there? You know, it's hard. It's hard to come out and on the internet or, and, you know, s s tell people your, your problems and shit you've messed up with. It's, it's not easy to do. Um, yeah. I mean, I it's like, put it out in such a relatable way though. I try, I try my best, but you, you know, do, I'm glad that great job. I'm glad that helped you out. Whoever helped out. It's uh, we all go through it. Um, real quick, before we get into, uh, you know, regret and bad life choices, we've got $200 from downtown, the smooths. Thank you, man. Seriously. Um, I would break something right now, but I'm running out of sticks. I need more props. <laughs> um, he goes, thanks for all you do. You're the best, uh, in the business, real talk, truth, facts for the people. Hey, seriously. Thank you very much. That is, uh, it's fucking awesome because I just quit my job. So thank you. Um, seriously, I can't thank you enough for that. So anyways, all right, Ryan. So is there anything you'd like to share with um, the people? Maybe something you, uh, bad decision, regret. Um, if not, so, it's okay, but you know. Yeah, I got one thing. It actually got me fired from the first corporate job that I had. That's and the best. Is, um, you know, and it's, it's one of the, I binge watched all your healthcare videos that you put. And this is something that a lot of people don't realize is that if you go to like a therapist, like let's say even a chiropractor, so like your physical therapist or your chiropractor, their job is to make money. And you work back and forth with doctors and you work together on a business level and also a patient care level. 
And a lot of the times these people are coming into the, the therapy offices. The doctor knew damn well that giving them therapy, let's say two times a week for four weeks is not going to fix them. But the point that they can come see me, get their bill that they get paid out a couple times, eight times, and then go back to the doctor and run them up again and say, oh, let's try something else. Let's try something new. Let's try physical therapy, not occupational therapy. And oh, it's my just, God. I, I want people to know that there are, you know, they are taking advantage of you in the system. And if it, anybody out there is listening and you have issues with your hands or your feet or you've got your knee replaced, you got to find some local owned mom and pop shop that can help you with your therapy needs because the corporate companies, you know, they might have a bunch of storefronts. They might have a bunch of, you know, I don't know what's by you. What kind of therapy place they're by you that you drive by? You there's every, that, there's every, there's, by. there's everything in the, um, there's every, everything. Yeah. It's, I it's, can give you a... it's, it's everywhere. But like, for instance, like, um, most of the doctors I've ever gone to, they're usually kind of mom and pop, but I've been to some serious like hospitals where it's kind of like, that's the only specialist there is. Mm -hmm. um, like my dentist, he's him and his wife literally run the entire office. Like his wife's at the reception. He's back there drilling holes in my mouth. You know, they're the, the kids are walking in and out. Um, so it's like small kind of practice and they offer like in-home insurance where I could just get insurance through them versus having a dental you know, so I kind of go somewhere like that for certain things, but, um, I've never, I don't want to say I've been taken advantage of by the healthcare system. I mean, I did kind of, you know, um, the fact that they, you know, wanted to make me believe that I need to take this medication for the rest of my life. Um, that was kind of fucked up. Uh, who knows if they're right. It's been almost 10 years since I've had it. Um, <laughs> but you know, I don't know, man. And I don't want to talk too much shit, but it was kind of fucked up to kind of convince me that if I don't take this, I'm dead. And eventually, once I turned like 24, 25, I was like, I was like, this doesn't make any sense. I was like, I, I, I'm not buying it. You know, I'm not saying they didn't help me. They didn't save my life. They did. But I don't think it's like you got to take this forever. You know, it's like I'm not. 80 you feel me like i'm you know when you're young you should be able to like bounce back or maybe i'm tripping maybe not i mean maybe no, people i don't are think you're tripping i don't think you're tripping at all man no. i'm uh i'm somebody that has you know gone through and tried some medications when i was younger you know some mood stabilizers even some antidepressants admittedly at some points and yeah now you know i haven't taken them in probably three or four months now and i still got the prescription you know if i felt like i needed to get back on it but you know, in the last couple months, I've, I've been happier than I've been before. I made more money than I've been before. I found ways to enjoy life and enjoy a niche. And I feel That's like awesome. maybe it's just a crutch. You know, you can grow out of those things. So I advocate for that too, man. You know, yeah, I there's a lot of crazy at all. There's a lot of people that take these mood stabilizers and this, uh, which I'm not knocking it. I don't want to say that, but I look at it like, you know, I look at those things as like a band-aid. I don't know if you're supposed to be taking those for a long time, man. I I don't think so. Like, you know, it's normal to get mad. You know, it's normal to get sad. It's normal to be happy. Um, but I do relate with you. I was thinking about that the other day. Like little things that I used to really enjoy that for some reason I just – I'm like, why don't I find the same joy that I used to even just five years ago? I think that's just something we got to deal with as we get older. Um, and then the fact that you got to work, that's, that sucks. And you have yeah. to worry about money. I think that's the biggest one. I think that's it. I think anybody like, especially young, like when I say young, I mean, just basically 30 and under like so many people are on these depression, these, these medications. And I'm sitting there like, I think it all just comes from the fact that we're going, how am I going to live forever? What am I going to do? You know, like, I think that's really it. I mean, I, I know I tripped out about that, like being young going, Oh God, how am I going to make it? You know? Um, I think it gets a little easier as you get older or maybe it gets worse. I don't know. But anyways, man, I got more people in the queue here. Appreciate you coming on here, Ryan. I'm going to let you go. Yeah, and, thanks uh, for having uh, me, Jack. Keep making congr great content. Yeah. Congrats on everything. Keep helping people. And uh, yeah, hair's looking good too, by the way, man. I'm going to let yeah, you go. Too, man. 
space. All right. Once again, thanks for the 200 bucks for the smooths, man. I really, seriously, unreal. Got $2 from downtown from uh, Drewski. Being afraid of making mistakes is my number one regret. Oh, my God. I think, uh, yeah, I've definitely been in that position. All right. We got another guy hopping in here. We've got uh, Darnell. What's going on, brother? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you just fine. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome, man. Uh, so uh, how old are you and where are you hailing from, brother? Uh, I'm 37 years old. Um, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, but I live in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, another Texas boy coming in here hot. Okay. Well, that's awesome, man. So um, tonight's topic, as you know, regrets, bad life choices. Is there anything that you'd maybe want to share with us, something that you ponder on once in a while where you go, shit, I shouldn't have done that? Um, two things, you know, but they kind of go hand in hand. Um, the first is I've always been an underachiever, uh, my entire life. Like I've been the guy that always just does just enough. Like even during my time in school, I've always done just enough just to pass. Like I was the right. kind of student. If I got a C, I was happy, you know? Yeah, I made it. I don't have to get an A. I don't have to be better than everybody else. And, you know, I was a big time C student myself too. I totally relate to that. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the only thing is you don't realize that when you're young, but as you get older, it really affects you, especially in the workplace. You have to outshine. You have to outperform this competition. Like being average is not going to cut the mustard, especially in the workplace. No, it's not. It's not. Yeah. No, I totally get that. And that's something too. Well, now that I really think about it, because I did just skate by. Um, yeah. uh, but I learned once, literally, because I was skateboarding a lot, but like um, at all my jobs for the most part, up until I want to say 23, no, it's about 24. That's when I, that's when I realized I was working at this restaurant and I realized that Oh, the way you make the most money here is by is by doing the most. Mm -hmm. So that's when I realized that I, I could go if I do if I do a great job here, they're gonna let me behind that bar, and then I can make five hundred a night behind that bar compared to two hundred a night over here. And so it, that's the first time it clicked for me, at least. Besides skateboarding, because skateboarding was something where it's like the more I do it, the more I film, the more I get out of it. I learned that, but when it came to work and money, that's where I was like, oh, this is how I can, um, you know, this isn't, this isn't, uh, geometry anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about real life. I live, I, I live on my own. I need to make money. Like, how do I make the most? Yeah. How do I make the most? Oh, you got to do, you got to do the most. So you're absolutely a thousand, a thousand percent correct on that. Thousand yes, percent. Uh, you know, absolutely. And, and the problem is, like I said, you don't see it when you're young, like uh, especially, you know, I'm part of uh, they call us Generation Y, you know, and we were we're known like if you do the research on all the ge different generations, the Gen Xers, uh, 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 the Baby Boomers, uh, Gen Y, Gen Z, you know, we're known as the laziest generation. The laziest. That's what it really? says about it. Really? Yeah, we, we are considered the laziest generation. I had yeah. no idea. I, I thought yeah. um, I thought the new the Gen X or wait, what is it? Whatever Gens after millennials, I thought they were the laziest. It's Gen Y. Oh, that's Gen Z. Uh, Gen, Gen Z. Z is after Gen, Gen Y. Gotcha. But, but um, yeah, with, uh, with Gen Z, it's I'm not gonna say that they're. I'm not gonna say that you know. I mean, yes, they they do come off as kind of lazy and entitled, but. <laughs> At the same time, too, it's like they do have a drive. Like, I don't know if you notice with the like now with the a, advent of social media, uh, like Gen Z is really influenced by social media. So you got all these guys that are watching all these. And I've seen a couple of your videos about them, especially the uh, the red pill gurus. Um, oh, yeah. You did a video, you did a video about uh, how, you know, you got to pay for their, their and all it is is multi-level marketing. They, they call it yeah. something else. It's multi-level marketing is all it is, you know, and they act like they invented. But anyway, the Gen Zers, 
you know, they'll flock into this and you, they're influenced by uh, people, you know, with, with yachts that are probably rented, you know, or it's somebody else's yacht that they borrowed, you know, they're displaying it. See, I got this yacht. I got this Lambo. I got two blonde girls under one underneath the, each arm. This is how you make money. You know, <laughs> this, oh, yeah. this is how you make it. You know, that whole nine to five and save your money, man, that's that's your grandparents. Yeah, and, you, and you know, and, and you know what though, it kind of, and sometimes you kind of got to even go, they're kind of right. <laughs> it's kind of like, it doesn't seem to be working for most people. Although it can, you can, I, I, I don't want to say you can't do it that way. Cause you absolutely can. Um, sometimes, sometimes the old ways are best though. Like, you know, like, you no, know, not everybody. It's like this. Okay. Not everybody, you know, like, um, you know, I, I played, uh, you know, like pick up games of basketball, for example, but I never played professional basketball. Never. I'm only six one. So yeah. obviously I'm not going into the NBA, but I played pick up games of basketball. You know, obviously I'm not going into the NBA. Not everybody's going to make it into the NBA. Sometimes, you know, you got, okay, if I'm not, you know, with me being six one, you know, I'm not going to dominate the NBA. I'd be lucky to make the team, you know, kind yeah. of thing. You'd be lucky to be talented. Boy. Exactly. You know, so it's like, you know, there are other wet avenues and not everybody. And the problem is a lot of these videos, they're all get rich quick schemes. That, my opinion, that's the problem. There's no secret. And I, and I think even you had said it or somebody had left a comment um, in the videos where it said, if it was so easy, then everybody else would be doing it. Yeah, you know what we should do? You know, if I put out a video called Get Rich Slow, you know, I probably ain't going to do that well, you know? It's, so it's, it's not, but it'll probably have good advice. Yeah, but it's probably true. It's probably true. I mean, that's that's where everything's at, though. It's like, I don't knock, uh, like, for instance, I just hired a young kid. He's 21, and I hired this young cat to help me edit short-form videos. Like, I do the long-form stuff. I enjoy that, but uh, mm -hmm. I... You know, I was like, look, I'll pay you per video, you know, we'll see how things go. And that way you can kind of, you know, I know he's not going to make me more than, you know, 50 videos a month. So I know I'm going to cap out at a certain amount of money. So I'm not, you know, but I, but I'm giving him the opportunity to, you know, if you want to make me a hundred videos, I'm going to pay you for a hundred fucking videos. So I'm giving him that opportunity, but he's one of these kids. That's how you're saying they're looking at it. Like for what things are worth. So he works at a restaurant and he's worked two jobs and then he signed up to do this with me. And I got to tell you, he's actually been showing up every week and he's got the stuff done. He's hustling, he's grinding. And, um, uh, but I think he sees it though. Like some of these younger kids, they, uh, I don't even think they're lazy. I think they're just more like, well, if I'm going to have to work forever, let me at least do something I, I want. Um, sure. so I think that's a big one too. But anyways, brother, I got more people, Darnell, in here. Um, if I uh, if I may if I may say one more thing, just real quick, ahead. it's just a sec. It's just a second thing. The thing is, is since it, uh, this was going to segue into uh, what I was going to say, uh, another issue is I when I was younger is uh, learning dis financial discipline. Financial oh. discipline. Is I think we're all discipline. guilty. I think we're all yeah. guilty. I know I am. You know. That's why that's I harp. My, that's, that's why. I, yep, and I and I harp on that a bunch on here because one, it's you know I think it's kind of funny when I you know mistakes we make, but also like I've done it. I've I've fucked up. I've like made these, th and I can't get mad at it. It's just like all right, I won't do that again, and I don't necessarily yeah. regret that stuff because it's like whatever, man. I chose to have fun with that. I chose to do these things, but that's something too, man, and. Let's be realistic. I, I think now is probably the best time for people, um, especially younger cats, to hear older people and have this. You know, you don't just have your parents telling you how to live. You got like other people where you're like, oh, OK, so that's how this guy um, got way further than anybody I know. And so I yeah. think that's the cool thing is now it's like now it's like you got everybody harping about it. So now a lot more people are conscious about like, oh, I should probably think about retiring one day. You know, mm -hmm. like I think about that. I want to make a whole video on retirement where I go out and just ask strangers this question. 
Um, cause I don't think a lot of us have thought about it. I didn't start thinking about it till three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't start thinking about it till I went broke. Uh, seriously, I went broke in uh, 2017. I, I was making, when I got on the army in 09, about a year later, I became a government contractor, you know? And so, um, you know, I was making good money. Like I started out making, I think 146 grand, my first government contract. I wow. got out at one. Yeah. Then I was making 165. And I'm thinking, oh, the war on terror? Oh, it's going to be around forever. We're not going to kill all the terrorists. You know, there's always going to be terrorists, right? I love but, terrorists. No, I'm just kidding. No, that sounded I'm bad. Kidding. Yeah, that does sound I'm saying bad. About, the, about the money. Yeah. About the money. Yeah. But, but, but the money, the problem is, is that in 2014, Obama wants to pull out of Afghanistan. You know, so now the money's starting to dry up. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't get true home. The money's drying up. And I committed myself into a career that was dependent on government spending. You know, and it didn't last. You know. Did you have a little too much fun with some of that money too? I sure did. Yeah. You know. Guilty. Uh, for me, Guilty. For me, it was vacation. I took some lavish vacations. I mean, I was doing good saving money because in Afghanistan and Iraq, there's nothing to spend your money on. Like once you buy a TV, an Xbox, you know, and maybe a video game once a month or something, you know, you know, just something to do. There's yeah. really nothing to spend money on. It's yeah. when you get home. That's the problem. A lot of guys would spend money on cars, on motorcycles and stuff like that. For me, it was vacations and life experience, you know. Um, but, yeah, that that was an issue. And then trying to trying to impress women, you know. Oh, oh I'm, yeah. I'm a high value man. I'm six figure Darnell, you know. <laughs> six and, figure Darnell, baby, what's up? You know, that's a, that's how my attitude was, and man, I mean, I was the I was the same sucker, uh, uh, same sucker dude, just with money in my pocket. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm gu know? I'm guilty. I'm guilty too, man. I I I really am. Um, that's so funny. It's like. Hey, I'm not tall enough for the NBA, but I'm tall enough for you, baby. Um, sorry, I, I thought that was a stupid. Uh, but anyways, man. Hey, you know what though? We live and we learn. Save that money, everybody. Uh, Darnell, I got other people waiting in the queue. I appreciate you coming on here. Uh, means Thank a lot. Brad. Hey, man. Uh, appreciate you, brother. Till next time. All right, we got some more people coming in here. Uh, Darnell, I like him. He was a cool dude. Um, oh, uh, Mojo is about. He said he's buying new gloves. Fuck it. Uh, thanks for the four, five big ones, man. I appreciate that. I liked your gloves, dude. It just makes you stand out. Remind me of Home Alone, Lost in New York. You know what I mean? Uh, thanks for the five bucks from uh, SYZYGY7. Uh, I regret not being there for my brother. He called me one day to say that he loved me. Two days later, later, he was gone. Wow. Really sorry to hear that. This just took a very depressing turn. All right, we got some more people coming in here. Sorry, I'm not getting through all your guys' comments. Uh, David Cooper says, uh, George, I'm going to be with you in a moment. Um, Pat, I see you in there. Yoli guacamole, I'm going to get with you guys just a moment here. David Cooper says, smoking, drinking at 14, alternative school, jail at 18, felony. Wow. Uh, 22, signed out of the DOC, 120 rehab, convicted at 23, prison three times. Dad died on the third one. Missed the funeral. Holy shit. You know what saying? Count your blessings. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to count all of mine tonight because we just had some gnarly one. Um, this guy, wait, this guy got his job based on reverse racism. I assume hard to relate to a brother with a, with a, how to climb the ladder. I don't understand that one. Okay. Reverse racism. I like that. That's got a good ring to it. What's up, Yanina? How you doing? Okay, bah, bah, bah. this guy go the smooths. The boomers thinks think everyone is lazy. However, there's not greater drop in uh, quality than there is from the World War II generation of the boomers. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, okay, you guys got your own rhetoric going on in here. All right, let's get George coming in here. Hey, coming how you doing? Hey, uh, George, my boy. What's going on, man? Um, how old are you and where are you hailing from, brother? I'm going to be 59. I'm just north of Atlanta. All right, man. All right. So you, you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
No, you're good, dude. You're good. Yeah, I'm uh, just, just north of Atlanta. I chatted with you a little bit on Instagram. All right. Yeah, appreciate you reaching out. Anytime you, I, and anybody who's DM me on Instagram lately, I haven't got to you. Terribly sorry. I'm making my way through. I try my best. Um, I really do. So, anyways, brother, you know the topic of tonight: bad life choices. Is there uh, anything that comes to your mind? Maybe you want to share with everyone in here. Maybe a little words of wisdom. I guess my biggest thing I would say uh, was I had a rough childhood. Um, joined the military early. Probably, I wish I had spent more time with my parents before they passed. That um, seems to, that seems to be a big one. Um, there's a, I wish I remember the name of this guy's channel, but he goes around. And he basically straight interviews uh, mostly older people, like 50 and up. And he always asked that question about, you know, uh, you know, something you regret or something like that. And a lot of the people, a big one that I noticed was spending time with their family. That's like seems to be one of the biggest ones. Yeah, that's uh, very common. I was um, – I- I was a paramedic firefighter for a while right after I got out of the service and I met a few older patients that were uh, getting um, significant medical procedures done and on our way, you know, from one hospital to another, you would, you know, they would be like, you know, I, I wish I'd spend more time with my family. I never, never heard anybody say, I wish I spend more time at work. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> one says that. Yeah. So, but I, I did want to, to mention that uh, a lot of people were talking about work and work related stuff. And yeah, there are a ton of scammers out there on the internet, you know, get rich quick type stuff there. That that stuff really um, only benefits a person that's promoting their product. Um, I started doing coaching, uh, you know, uh, uh, for career coaching for men. Um, And basically the, 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 the most, Significant thing I could tell anybody uh, compared to when I was young. <laughs> when I was young, you had to run down to the library and figure out, you know, yeah. what, what the salaries were for different jobs, where they were available. Now with the internet. Yeah, you just go, you just go, yeah. hey, hey, Siri, will you do my dishes or my laundry? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And so what I would recommend if you're wanting to improve your situation, get on LinkedIn, get on Indeed, any of the big job boards. And you can actually say, show me every job that pays a certain amount of money within 20 miles of my home, for example. You will be surprised at jobs that you never even heard of or even dreamt of that sometimes you don't even need college. You just need a little bit of training. And sometimes I'll even do the because they're in high demand positions and nobody knows about them that you could actually get OJT OJT training from the employer. So they're, what I try to like to do is just try to uh, help kind of match people to the opportunities. And and that's kind of what I do. I don't try to sell, you know, get rich quick stuff. Mostly it's like, Hey, there's a job down the street that pays 80 grand a year and they need you to get, you know, a CDL. I'm just just picking something and I need you, you you know, go get your CDL and go and go apply to that damn job because it's waiting there for you. Just, it's just aligning because a lot of people don't realize what opportunities they are out there and how close they are until somebody says, Hey, Hey, hey focus, focus on that. Yep. Focus on the girls. Don't focus on the cars, you know, and all the little life's distractions. Just if people could just kind of get a sense of focus and purpose and say, I'm not doing anything else, but getting what I need to get to that job. And, um, Oh Yeah. Be- most people would be very, very successful. That's what coaching is really all about. I got four kids. I mentioned to you, I've been ma- in a video. I've been, you know, my wife and I are going over 30 years of marriage. Wow. Four kids, two grandkids, uh, made a lot of mistakes. And with going through life, you kind of sit back and like, what can I do to help people? And this is one of the things that I figured that I could do the best to help others is just to kind of talk to, to you and other people and be like, don't give up. Don't get discouraged automation has really, you know, people blame, blame the boomers. It's not the boomers that done anything. Think about it. You've got a supercomputer sitting in your hand. Yeah, true. You know, yeah. And automation has changed the world. The internet has changed the world. So basically we, instead of blaming the boomers, what we need to do is say, 
all right, how do I approach the job market? You know, we have to approach today's job market, not the one that our parents had. Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. And they, and you know what, to be fair, they're doing their best and they know what they know. And if it's outdated, yeah. it's outdated. Um, and I, and I got to give credit to where credit's due. Cause I talk to a lot of people who are 50, 60, 70, even 80 year old people. And they all get it. it mm -hmm. It's all from this channel too. They all get it. So I don't want to say every person who's older doesn't get it. Cause a lot of them do, you know, um, especially everybody in my neighborhood, they all live on a fixed income. Cause there are a lot of like seventies and up and they get it because guess what? All their bills are going up, but their money that they've saved for retirement is not. Yeah. Um, so, so, so they fucking get it. You want to go talk to, you know, you'll talk to them. They're going to be like, ah, oh, tell me about it. I had to, you know, like my one neighbor over here has a yard sale. I think every other week, I'm not kidding. Yeah. And I went over there recently cause I always pass by it and I never stop. I stopped, I go in there and I was like, hey, I see you doing this all the time. He's like, he's like, yeah, well, unfortunately for me, I had to find another way to make some more money and I don't want to go get another job. So I'm just selling shit in my yard. Now, I, was like, I, will, oh. now, I, will, I will say this much. A lot of things that people make mistakes on in their careers is that they're not brave enough to make a change. But a lot of times in my career where I've made big pay jumps has not been going down to the boss down the hall and talking to the boss. It's always been moving to a different job where somebody will be like, Hey, I'll pay you eight, nine, ten dollars an hour more to do the exact same job, but at a different company because they recognize your value. Where they're like, "Hey, we've been paying George for forever, ten bucks an hour or fifteen bucks an hour. He wants a five dollar pay raise. That's a lot of money." But the markets change, inflation's changed. Oh yeah. But the other company across the street will be like, "Oh yeah, we'll take him. Why not?" You know, he's got ten years experience. So people need to have the internal courage to sit there and go, "Maybe it's time for a change." Yeah, and another cool thing too, this happened to me twice, two different jobs, but the best one is I was bartending and waiting tables at this like really pop and party place, but they were only giving me one bar shift a week. Mm -hmm. So what happened? I go up, I go, Hey, I'm putting my two weeks notice. You know, I'm gonna go get a job over at this other spot. And they're like, what do you mean? Why are you going? We love you. And I go, I go, well, love ain't gonna, love ain't <laughs> gonna do it, baby. I was like, y you know, this whole love thing. I'm not here for love. Um, but we end up talking because I've known them a long time. And what do you know? The next schedule, I had only three bar shifts. And I went from making, you know, I was making around 800 a week, which just wasn't cutting it because I went, you know, I was used to the bar money, which is more. Right. And so went from that 800 a week, basically doubled just in one week, um, nice. simply because I was going to quit. Mm -hmm. But this also happened. It was so funny with my cousin because I told him, he was like, I think I'm going to leave my job and go work for this other company. I go, I go, well, why don't you go tell your boss that real quick and have like a little discussion with them? Because because I uh, they were like super cool. And I was like, why don't you go kind of feel them out real quick? Calls me back next day. No shit. He goes, he goes, dude's giving me a raise and bumping my position. He goes, more than that other place is going to pay me. And I was like, it's so funny. The moment you are like, you know, your value is when you try and go quit somewhere. Exactly. exactly. That's when you know, because if, if you go try and quit somewhere and they don't try to keep you, then it's like, okay, I'm making the right decision. Yep. But the moment they try and keep you, it's like bingo. Yep. Um, but, hey, but thanks for that pointer on that. Um, so guys, you know, look on LinkedIn, look in, just type in what salary you want. And maybe you'll find an odd job. George, I appreciate you coming right. on. I got some other people to get through here. All right. Well, you take um, care. Thanks. You too, brother. Appreciate you. Uh, thanks for the two bucks. And no, I have never been to, I've been through Arizona. Sorry. I didn't read that comment. Thank you for the $2. Um, I've been through Arizona, but I never actually like hung out in Arizona, but I've driven through Arizona twice. Uh, fat man, fat men drive trucks. He goes, can you do a video on quiet quitting? Yeah, actually that'd be a good idea. Um, is quiet quitting basically when you still show up to work, but you don't really do anything. Um, you guys let me know if that's what that means. Um, but yeah, I've, I've quiet quit. I quiet quit my job at the restaurant. I'd be at work. I just wouldn't care. I'm just like, yeah, take my table. I want to get out of here. I really just didn't care anymore. I was basically clocked out. This guy goes, I don't regret shit. I've never been a simp and I voted for Trump. Hey, damn right, brother. Do your thing, man. 
Kevin Samuels talked about it. It's not the smartest people who make the most. It's the people with the with skills. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. Um, thanks, man. Have a good night. Thank you, uh, Corey, for the twenty big ones. I really appreciate that. All right, we've got we've got Pat coming in. Pat, can you hear me, brother? Good evening, Jack. How are you? Ah, great. Great to hear from you, man. It's been a while. I hope you had a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I really, I really, really did, man. I had a really great, uh, very blessed Christmas, and the New Year's been been coming in hot. Um, I hope you have as well. Uh, and Pat, you know tonight's topic: bad life choices and regret. You, uh, you got any words of wisdom? Anything you'd like to share with the good people here? Well, first of all, um, we're living in the American Marxist culture. So when you use terms like baby boomer, Generation Z, that's not the kind of things Republicans and conservatives, we're all Americans. Some are young, a lot are young. Some are you know, middle-aged, some are older, and some are very old. Uh, but we don't classify them into a specific, a, uh, specific time period. In other mm. words, baby boomers, 1945 to what, 1964, well, 1945 is the Second World War, and if you came home with your gonads and your wiener intact, why the hell would you wait till 1964 to boom? That makes sense. I'm just like, they don't make any sense. That's why. Hey, you know what? I guess <sighs> people just want a way to classify a group of people, but I get what you're saying. No, they're putting them down. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I get they, what you mean. They put them down. We're all Americans. And I, I, get what, I get what you're saying. I, I, I totally agree. The common thread that runs through everything, we're all Americans, you know, except for the 50 million or so that aren't. <laughs> um, that will have to be addressed. And the more recent, uh, you know, individuals. Um, having said that, the uh, economic situation has been done on purpose, with a purpose. Um, the purpose is to topple the country. That's what its purpose is. So, so what do you think? Um, so you think this crazy inflation is more of a, more of a on purpose kind of like, like uh, you know? I guess you could think about it just a theory, but I thought about this before. I was like, I was like, what's a good way to, to make people really like, uh, suffer. Um, yeah. Like suffer, but also kind of like, um, more, uh, follow, follow orders It's kind of to make everybody so poor that it's almost like, yes, come and save us government. Well, I don't yeah, know. It's some crazy. No, theory no, you're about. absolutely right. Uh, no, you're, you're, too, you're right. Too cool. Think, think about it this way. Think about, um, you know, the uh, Congressional Budget Office said twice, uh, and maybe even late last year a third time, um, when they said the, the Biden administration, you can't, you can't keep spending this kind of money. Um, and having nothing to show for it. Um, so yeah, I, I pay a lot of fuck. We, we all collectively here pay a shit ton of taxes. I had somebody say that, uh, they were disappointed in me because I said something about, uh, you know, I tried to make taxes feel better for myself. So I said, Oh, if I paid a lot of taxes this year, then I made a lot of money. Um, no. but I, but I, but I had to say like, first of all, I understand I'm getting ripped <clears throat> off and all of us are, I get that. But at the same time, I'm like, what am I going to do? Not, you know, if I don't pay, the next thing you know, I'm I'm royally screwed. Um, oh, you know, they'll come after you. Yeah, come and take my Trust shit. They you know, will. The, yeah, yeah. The biggest, and I've been through the court system. So the last thing Jack wants is, is to that, go, go stand through, in front of a judge. <laughs> I I don't want to ever deal with that. Um, if I have to, fine, whatever. I'm gonna show up to the damn thing. I'm gonna do it. But I'd much rather not. Um, right. But anyways, let's not get too off topic here, Pat. Um, I do agree with what you're saying, but um, I want to keep it on par. Is there anything in your life that you may have done that you maybe regret or a bad choice you want to share with the with the younger youth here? I could have done things better. 
put it to you that way. You think so? Like what things would you say if you had to name like um, two, two or three things? I'm usually cut to the chase because that's the kind of jobs I've had. And uh, a little more tact. That's something you have to learn. And uh, yeah, cutting to the chase is what I do. And really, I don't give a crap what's going on around me. It's not like I just happen happen along. I got a call or, you know, a police officer stopped me. He's very nice, but he can stop me and or you and enlist your help, especially in Pennsylvania. Pretty sure Florida has a similar law. And even though he's very polite about it, I know better. He could order me. And guess what? When he showed me, no fooling. His partner is on his knees giving someone CPR. So they needed some help. Okay. Yeah. Stuff like that. I wish I would have just had done things much better tactfully. Um, <clears throat> I didn't spend a lot of money on broads. I didn't have to. Um, well, that's a good thing. Yeah. One broad. Oh. Yeah. One broad will ruin you, though. Well, yeah. They'll make you or break you, one or the other. No, and they'll break you. That's for sure. He goes, no, they'll break you. Yeah, you know, but uh, having two blondes on your on each arm, uh, I've done that. Hey, you know. But I never had two Lamborghinis. Unless, well, we, unless they're both crashed, then I probably couldn't afford that either. No, yeah, their uh, parts still go for a lot. <laughs> That's right. I you couldn't know. afford the damn parts. But anyways, Pat, uh, I got a bunch of people in the queue. I got to start speeding this along here. Yeah, um, what wa wa wonderful, wonderful to hear from you, brother. Really good to hear from you. Hope you have a wonderful new year. I appreciate Jack, you. Are you, are you concerned about, uh, your, uh, your connection having problems with the, the proxy server with StreamYard? And so while you're doing it, like, like, no, I, I'm, no, I'm feeling no. like a confession. There's a no, father no, no. Jack there. Hey, father, yeah. how you doing? Hey, how you doing? <laughs> um, no, I, I'm not worried about that, that at all. It's just uh, I had a live maybe two lives ago, um, and it just got so far out of oh, control. So hard to manage. Okay. I lost complete control of the live, and I actually just kind of let it go on its own. And it was just a fucking mess. So now I'm going one by one, and it, it seems to be working out a lot better. So Okay, you use um, a parochial thing. That's all. You yep. got your stick handy? Oh yeah. Oh, I'm running low. I gotta, I gotta savor, savor the flavor, man. Your I gotta get more. Right, I gotta well, get Jack. new props. Enjoy your new year, sir. You take care. And thanks, uh, brother. I'll be watching. All I right. Pre I appreciate you, Pat. You've been right. a long Peace time supporter, you. man. Peace to you as well. All right, we got Anthony coming on. Real quick, Joe Morris goes. I have found that I love others more than they love me, but I keep helping them and trying. Yeah, that's uh, another big one for, and I don't regret helping anybody. I don't, but I do regret helping people with money, not people that have money, but helping people by giving them money. Um, I did that a lot. I mean, a lot. Um, honestly, it's kind of disgusting. Like I felt like I was Oprah or something. You get a car. Here's five hundred dollars. Here's twelve hundred dollars. Here's, you know, here's this. Here's three grand. Yeah, go ahead. You know, that's one thing I, I do. Uh, I don't regret it, but I look back at it and I go, wow. You thought you were rich, you know, and uh, it's, it's cool. Now I just help people by not giving them money and I help them in other ways. And uh, I'm still able to be kind and help people out. But, you know, it's a big one. That's a big one. The money shit. I mean, God, think about all the money I've given away. Even the homeless people, man. Just like, here's a hundred bucks. No big deal. Yeah. But it's cool because you give and you shall receive. Because uh, I just had strangers give me hundreds of dollars tonight. So I guess the world is, uh, it's a small world after all. I love it. All right, we got Anthony coming in here. Anthony, I hope you have some good news for everybody in the in the live stream. Welcome, well, brother. Well, uh, thank you, thank you, and uh, happy New Year, brother. And um, too, not yet, unfortunately, but hopefully soon. 
I, I don't like to talk about things before they actually happen. I feel like that's a jinx. But um, I want to stick with the topic. I don't want to go too far off and talk about me the whole time. Absolutely. Um, dude. But um, one of my biggest regrets is, and just to give you some context, um, when I was younger, when I met my wife, I put a lot of emphasis on my daughter um, getting to know her extended family, her grandparents, her uncles, her aunts. And we moved to Florida to be closer to my wife's family. And I would say that my my biggest regret, because that didn't really work out for us, is, you know, in 2015, we moved to Charlotte and we're in North Carolina now, still to the to this day. My biggest regret is not coming to Charlotte sooner. I feel like if we would have done that uh, when we had our daughter, we'd probably be in very different positions now. So. For me, that that's that's my biggest regret is gut, you know. Gut, but was your gut telling you to move there, but you just didn't, or were you? I, more we just didn't see Charlotte as an option. We didn't know that the properties here were so cheap, that the rent here was so cheap, that the economy here was flourishing. And if we would have known that when we were younger, we probably would would be in a very different position now. You know, I get I get what you're saying because I had a big one like not listening to my uh my gut instinct that's something too that i listen to now i listen to it now mm. but years back uh for instance living in california i knew around the the three year mark around the almost four year mark of living there because so i stayed five whole years but around the four year mark i knew and i didn't listen to myself because i wanted to stay out in dreamland and have fun right um, but I, I knew I was like, I need to leave now. I was like, I got, I was like, I got 20 grand, which I had much more than that, but you know, living in Cali over time, make bad decisions, stuff like that. So I'm down, I'm like looking at my bank, I'm like, okay, everything's going skyrocketing up in price. And I'm going, I'm like, I should probably go now. What did I do? I stayed, I stayed another uh, and just within six months, it was like, boom, apartment complex bought out the entire building, uh, 15 units. Everyone's got to go. No resigning leases, wow. nothing. Here's a 30 day notice. Next thing you know, I'm down to like just around 10 grand in the bank. Um, lost my job. Uh, luckily, I was just I was doing the resale thing. So I had a little bit of money coming in, right. like a little bit, like maybe I'd make 500 bucks for the month, which was awesome when you have a full-time job is actually 500. But um, just within a six month period, it was like bank accounts in half. I have nowhere to live. I'm in a car and now I got to stack up again. I'm taking care of my dad. So I got to get him into a place so that the 65 year old man at the time doesn't have to sleep in a car with his son. Um, and, uh, but I remember looking back at that and I was like, I will always listen to my gut instinct from now on. I was like, never again. Like I knew better. That was the funniest part. Right. I fucking, it was like, I had a crystal ball or something where I knew something bad was, it, it wasn't good. Um, Those so that, moments of clarity are very crazy when they um, happen. Dude. I remember just like. No, I mean, it was, it was not cool. It was not cool. And luckily I had some help along the way. So I don't want to say I didn't have any help. I did. Um, but yeah, dude, that was like, fuck. I'm sure so many people are going, yeah, no shit, dude. We've all done that. <laughs> and I wanted to tell you, Jack, I know you said you have regrets when it comes to giving people money and stuff like that. But, you know, if it wasn't for you giving me, you know, the help that I need in my time of need, I, you know, you don't know how much of a lifesaver you've been, man. So I thank you for that. Of course. Oh, and when I say giving people um, money, I mean kind of like more bigger. Like I've never just handed you a great thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like I've done stuff like that. And and when I look back at it, um, it wasn't uh, it wasn't really for the right reasons. It wasn't really mm -hmm. like. Um, just trying to help somebody. It was more like I'm up right now and I can do this. So I will, you know what I mean? Or, or it was for somebody who they weren't going to do the right things with that at all. You know what I mean? Mm. It was more like, yeah. I don't mean like stuff like that. Like I would have much rather 
like one time I gave somebody literally three grand. I, I would have, and we're not even friends anymore. You know what I mean? Like none of that. And it wasn't even my friend. It was a girlfriend at the time. But like, you know, and, and I didn't listen to my gut because my gut knew I'm not going to be with her long term. This shit's going to end. What did I do? I still gave her fucking three thousand dollars, and she didn't even have a job. Anyways, point is, is I would have rather gave three grand to somebody who was actually going to use it for the right reasons. You know what I mean? Or someone who actually really needed it. You know, like, yeah, like she that. was, she was just too prideful to call her mother and her well-off grandma for money. See what I mean? Like, she had yeah. options. You know, not everybody's mm. got that. You know, like right. not everyone's got parents they can call. Um, right. I can't money. call my mom. That's for sure. Yeah, exactly. So I don't regret ever doing stuff like that. Like, like taking money from the stream that one time that we donated to you. That don't mean that's 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 fair game. You know, that's that's the right thing to do. Um, but I more mean like kind of just stupid things like, you know, giving somebody a car because I felt like it. And, you know, and then. Wow. You know, but them, but them not doing the right things. You know, years later, they're still in the same spot. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, I'd give you wheels, and then you could go out and change your life. But no, now you could just go drive your friends around and still fucking do nothing. And then also, you know, just little shit like that. And um, I don't regret being nice, but I do regret how much I've I've given away uh, for the wrong reasons. That's for sure. Um, now if I do give people money, it's for the right reasons. It's like, no, you're helping somebody here. You know what I mean? Right. Like, um, you're not just giving money to somebody because, uh, just stupid shit that I've done, man. Uh, like, it's just, it is what it is. And honestly, well, I definitely do believe in, you know, you reap what you sow. And, and if you're reaping, you know, if you're reaping good things, you're going to, you're going to sow good things. You know what I mean? So. That's true. You get what you give. Oh, right. for the most for the most part, for the most part. Right. Yeah, shitty things happen to good people too. But uh, but anyways, Anthony. Um, oh, we don't even have anybody in the queue right now. All right, let's let's I read guess some everybody questions. Everybody got tired of waiting. Yeah, yeah. No, I, some people have popped off. This guy goes. Jack might have had a few drinks this evening. No, just water. <laughs> So I guess that is a drink. Yeah, I've had a few waters. Why do why do people always assume you're on some kind of substance? I don't know, because I'm a kooky guy. I don't know. I noticed that with the chat. Yeah, yeah. People always think I'm on something. I'm just like, no, I'm just uh I could be a just bit high more. energy. Yeah, but you know what? I, I don't there's hours of the day where I don't even talk. You know, there's no one to talk to. I'm also the kind of guy where it's like I'm in a group or like a big room with people. I'm usually the quietest dude, you know, because I don't just uh, if I'm going to talk, I'd rather say something worthwhile. And then when and then when I'm doing this, I'm I'm putting on a thing for you guys. I have to talk. You know, I can't just right. sit here and say nothing. You guys be like, what's up with this dude? He's just saying nothing all night. But anyways, oh, we got somebody coming in. Anthony, love you, man. Good luck. Good Keep talking to you, man. Of course, dude. Tell the wife I say hi. Of I wish course. the best. All right, Mike. All right, we got another guy coming in. We got Joe He's about to come in here. Let me see. Um, but Joe, I'm about to get you on here in just a second. One moment. Several seconds. Damn, I am way behind on this chat here. Jesus. All right, thank you for the five bucks. Uh, I regret hurting people who didn't deserve it. Uh, that's That makes sense. I think we have could all have maybe been a little, little mean to people. Sometimes we didn't mean to. Anyways, we got Joe coming in. Joe, what's going on, brother? Not much. I'm hanging out in north central West Virginia. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, brother. Doing great. Good, so, good. um, you know, you know tonight's uh, topic. Is there any uh, bad life choices or any regrets? Maybe you uh, want to share with the good people here tonight. Of course, yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 I goofed off uh, too early. Like my my parents basically were paying for my college, right? Right after I got out of high school. 
and I goofed off the first two years and almost failed out. And I ended up salvaging out of four years a 3.2 compared to my younger brother, two years younger. We were very close. He, he was an honor student. And, and when you look at life today about, about where we are, I mean, he's doing better, man. He, he made better choices. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, it's, it's real. It's, it, it's real. And, and we, we talk about it sometimes like, yeah, I should, I should have buckled up. And we went to, uh, we went to school for business, uh, uh, with a, with a minor in accounting and, uh, a major in finance. And I had a double major in finance and management and my brother went on to get a master's and he works in banking and I ended up working for a local power utility for the last 23 years which is a steady job with good benefits and everything. And it, it did help me. I got in a, like a near fatal motorcycle wreck, like maybe three or four years after I was employed there. And the insurance pretty much took care of me and because I wouldn't be walking today. It was, it was horrible. I was thrown from the machine like 50 yards. Jesus it, Christ. It was, oh, dude, it was, I mean, 25 miles an hour through town. If you hit if you hit the side of a pickup truck pulling across traffic in 25 miles an hour, you'll be thrown about 40, 40 yards, 40 feet, whatever, and you will be effed up. It will f you up, dude. Just scooting on on a street and trail bike, like a 250 street and trail bike. Yeah, nothing Anyways, even crazy. You weren't even going crazy fast. That's crazy. I'd already had it out of my system by now. I've been riding for about five years at that point, and I'd had all the hot dog shit like out of my system. I was a, I mean, I was a, I was a mechanic. I worked on all my buddies' bikes. I did it for money on the side, and uh, you know, got got thrashed. But you know, shit happens. But it, happens. it was good having a job that had you know good insurance coverage that young, like twenty five years old, having insurance coverage because it was like, dude, I'm like a, I'm like a six hundred and fifty thousand, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar man. All that, all, all that, all that shit, dude. They did to me was like big money, dude. It was, it was like twelve hours of surgeries. It was crazy. Jesus Christ. My buddy, I talked to my buddy tonight. He was at the accident scene. He was working at the auto shop, the Ford or uh, uh, GMC Cadillac garage, right by where it happened. And we were talking about it tonight. When he came up on me, my left leg was bent around back, and my foot was right here. Dude, I had a spaghetti leg all the way back behind me, and he was like, "Yeah, I remember that." I rolled up on you, and I was like, "Yeah, I was in shock. I didn't feel shit, but I knew I couldn't get up. Like shit wasn't working downtown." And he was like, "Yeah, I just told you you were doing good, but I saw your foot, your head was oh, resting your foot with your helmet on. It was fucked up." So did, let me ask you a question: You still ride motorcycles? Fuck no. no. I'm, about to say, I'm about to say I Fuck was like. No. Listen, I'll brother, remember. it's not it's not the machine. You can respect the machine. If you have a good machine and you're comfortable with it and you know its limitations, you can ride it good as hell. But if some idiot or both times that I got in traffic accidents, I've had two. And I, I, I rode for about seven years after I got in a wreck, after I recovered and I got another wreck. Same same thing. And they were both elderly people above 80 years old. One dude was 83. The other dude was 85. And they shouldn't have been out driving because they, I mean, if they pull out in front of a motorcycle with less than two car lengths, dude, you can't, you can't stop. You lock up the brakes and try to get around them and you end up hooking them and, and almost dying both times. I got thrown twice and I'm done. I've got like a, like a quad bike, you know, for the woods and stuff, you know, for deer hunting and all that other crap. But yeah, that's a little uh, more, you can kind of. You can putter around on those. You can yeah, putter around on you those. Have to, you don't have to worry about other traffic, really, in the woods. So. Um, no. Well, anyways, man, I appreciate you coming on. I got a couple more people in the queue here. Uh, Thanks for your time. Of course, Joe. You have a wonderful night, brother. Uh, the working man. Good man. Good to see you in here. He goes, Jack. Love you, bro. Just wanted to pop in and say thanks again for helping me and my channel. Keeps growing. Uh, thanks for the help. Yeah, of course. And anybody watching this, uh, the working man, super cool dude, does a lot of dating type content, talks about uh, being a working man because that's what he is. Um, I think he shaved his iconic mustache, but he's a cool dude and I uh, really like his stuff. 
yeah, feel free. Um, I'm about to be wrapping this up here soon. We got one more guy in the queue, but the next live definitely pop in again. I'm doing the one on ones. It's been going a lot, a lot smoother. I think. Uh, I mean, I hope everybody's enjoying it. Um, we've got ten dollars from downtown. Richard Anderson coming in hot. He goes. Uh, I meant to say, Pat, the dude with the Trump humping the flag, sounded like he had a few drinks this evening. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. Um, but don't. I got confused because I have had a lot of people in the comments. Not all the time, but enough people to where, you know, they go, Jack, you've been, uh, you know, is that metaphorical or you really been hitting the shit? You know, so. It's not something uncommon that I do get. Sometimes I got a red glaze in my eyes. I think my eyes are good tonight. But sometimes my eyes will just be so red for no reason, you know? And then when I smoke weed, they're like crystal clear. I'm just kidding. Um, all right. We've got we've got Saul coming in here. What's going on, brother? Hey, Jack. You're real cool. I like your videos. I've been keeping up lately with a, a lot you've been doing. But right um. But um, in the last guy, I like the last guy story. Um, I forgot his name. Cool guy though. Sad about his and in, his incidents with biking, but yeah, um, it it happens, you know. Yeah, you got a need for speed. It'll get All right, you. So my thing is, it's the drinking. Yeah. Uh, you got you got you got the, got the alcohol got you by the dick, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You still you still drinking now? Are you sober or how's that going? No, I'm still drinking. Yeah. But yeah. How old are you? Health. How old are you? 29, about to be 30 in October. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh if you don't mind me asking how how uh, you drink every day? Yeah. Yeah. No, I I I I, I get it. I mean, I I totally get it. It makes you uh makes you feel good. I get it. I did it with weed. I actually um, did it with alcohol. I did it. I drank every day. I also, I also work, and you know, when I don't work, I also like to try to stream. And on the weekends, I um, I, I live. I, I'm a single parent, so on the weekends, whenever I can, I could try to take my child. But yeah, it, it yeah that that goes into a deeper story. But oh yeah, no, it's uh we don't have to get too deep. But um, yeah. how long how how many years do you think you've been drinking every day, man? If you don't mind me asking, dude, yeah, hard. How many years do you think? I think <laughs> over fifteen. So you've been drinking every day for fifteen years? Oh, uh, man. Um, not every day, but at the same time, you know, it's like, uh, I've never thought of quitting. If, if you understand what I'm saying. I get, I get what you mean. I get what you yeah. mean. It's not every day, but it's like, it's, you know, like shit, I'll take a drink if it comes to me. Mm. Oh, All right. Well, if it's not, every, if it's back not, every... that, backpedal that, <laughs> yeah, that sounds wrong, but either way. Yeah. Drink. Hey. You know what? It's not good. It's not hey, good. I was gonna say, man. There's very few people that um that I've met in my life that were uh what do you call it? Uh, what's an alcoholic that's got it together? Was that called functioning alcoholic? Yes. Um. Yeah, I haven't met too many of those. It gets um, deep. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, dude, I bartended a long time, and it was just I couldn't believe how some of these people functioned. I mean. Um, people Shoot. do it. It, it people has to be it. more. It has to be more than alcohol. I'll tell you that because at, at some point, you know, it got. You know, it was. I got. I slipped into somewhere dark, and that's what I mean. Like the drinking, you know, like it, it slipped me somewhere dark to the point that I regret all the mistakes that I made during those times when I went down there. Oh yeah. I, I, yeah, I blacked I blacked out from alcohol, man. I, that's, why, that's, that's why I don't drink often because some of my biggest regrets were from one three month stint of drinking every day, and I did it to my fucking self. I'm not gonna blame the alcohol. Um, and then just hanging hanging around with the wrong people. 
Oh my God. Yeah. Luckily, uh, I try to surround myself with good people, but yeah, that'll do it to you. I had to tell, um, you know, I'm in a different spot now. It's just me and my friend taco who live together. That's it. But at one point I had, you know, two people, there was more people in my house that were drinking or smoking weed every single day. And I wasn't. So I was like the outcast. So it's so difficult when it's in your face all the time. And I'm the kind of guy where I enjoy a joint once in a while. I do. I do. I, I, I will drink alcohol once in a while, you know, uh, maybe once a month, every other month, I might have a drink or two. Um, th- but other than that, it's like when it's in your face all the time, that's another reason I stopped bartending. I was like, bro, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I am like, it's in my face all the fucking time. There's a party going on. Um, people are throwing money at me and handing me shots and it's almost impossible to say no, I would do it. But there was nights where it's like, I would last, you know, we close at 2 AM and I'd last all the way till midnight without drinking. Right. Next thing you know, I'm fucking hammered and it's three in the morning and I'm not done cleaning up. And now I'm like, I can't even drive home. I got to wait another hour because I couldn't say no. And then eventually I was like, I got to just quit this job because every Thursday and Friday night, I seem to not, not be able to drink. And I'm just sitting here like, I think it did more bad for me um, than good. That's why I don't drink often. So. I, I hear you, Jack. I, I totally hear you. Um, um, the past like two, three years, I'd say probably around COVID me, right? Either way. I, I just been by myself. Like, you know, yeah, you know, those stages when it's like, uh, I can't say a problem, but at same time, no, I just been by myself. I don't party out. I don't go out. I don't go clubbing or anything like that. <laughs> if anything, my house is my club. <laughs> why, why, why do you, uh, we're going to end on this note, but why do you think, uh, why do you think he drinks so much? He's just trying to drown the feeling. Are you sad or like, what do you think it really is? Cause for me, I was trying to totally forget um, about, uh, my mom dying and me not being in a good career. And, um, you know, I was so focused on negative stuff that, you know, when I got drunk, I seemed to kind of forget about it. That's why I drank. So why, why do you think you do it? Dude? Um, I say multiple reasons, uh, try to get away uh, and multiple reasons, but I'm sorry about your moms, man. Hey, you know what? So, Hey, she made it out. She's on the other side now. She's probably chilling, you know. I hope she is. I hope she's big shit. Big shit. Big hey man, shit. well guess what? I'm gonna hope for the best for you, man. If it gets too bad, dude, don't be afraid to, you know, don't be afraid be to try, right try don't be afraid to YouTube try and quit. Life. I don't care. YouTube is life. I'm right here. Ah man. Well, have a great night, dude. Appreciate you popping on. You too. Wow. Thanks for the five bucks from uh, C. McKay, because you the man, love the show, love tonight's format, the one-on-one talk. And yeah, I think it's going much better. I, I think so, too. Thanks for the five big ones. I'm going to go through some of your guys' comments, wrap this show up. Chuck Nasty in the building. My boy Chucky e. D, heavy in a limousine. Yeah, that dude was drunk as fuck. Yes, he was. He was very drunk. And you know what? Whatever. He was sipping on that hooch. You know, Got the yak cocked back. He goes, give me a glass of yak. You know, dirty glass. Jim, what's up, man? He goes, I drink one uh, one day a week uh, the day I go into town. Yeah, like I'm able to – I can't drink once a week. I can only drink once a month or once in a while um, because I see what happens with me. For instance, like uh, the other week or so, um, you know, I smoked weed one night. Next thing you know, I smoked weed the next night. And I smoked weed the next night. See what I'm saying? I just don't have it in me. Um, You know, like I can't just smoke one cigarette. I got to have 20. I got to have them all. Uh, But that's me. This go, uh, Jim goes, I drink every day two during uh, 40. Oh, he's turning 48 this month. Trying to slack back on my consumption, but mostly uh, a beer drinker. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I think a lot of people are, are, you know, a lot of people drink, man. Even uh, someone very close to me usually has a cocktail, one cocktail every night. And uh, 
<sighs> you know, I try. I don't want to preach to them, but I just go, you know, that's how it starts. How do I know? Uh, this guy goes, don't drink, bro. Y'all look tired as dog. Yeah, that guy was definitely hammered, man. He was he was sipping that hooch. Ain't nothing but a hooch your mama. This person goes, homie looked permanently drunk. Yeah, let's not make fun of him too much. But it, it is true. It is true. He looked like he could laugh at himself, so it's fine. Uh, ba -ba -bum -bum -bum. Looks like he's drunk at me. Let me see. John, the CPA, goes, I was drunk after the Army for years. It destroys your dreams, man. You got to let it go. There are no answers at the bottom of the bottle. Destroys families. Yeah, it does, man. My mom died from drinking. My dad uh, was a big drinker. He definitely fucked up a lot in his life. That's for sure. The cool thing is, though, is I, I did learn from their, their lessons, though. Never done a pill. Never done narcotics. Never done coke. Um, so... <laughs> Jack looks like that dude from Biodome. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Uh, uh, Joe's back here. He goes, I was not drinking when I wrecked my bike. It was the mo uh, it was in the morning both times. I don't drink till 5 p.m. Classic. Classic Joe. Um, let's see. Bum, bum, bum. Get through a few more comments here. Bam Media is always in the comments. I appreciate you being here. A lot of people drink picked up drinking during the beer flu. That's a good one. <clears throat> this one's really true. Sitting with yourself can be difficult. Um, if you're a dick to yourself, do the dishes now for your... Oh, okay. Yeah, hey, but sitting alone with your thoughts sober, not the easiest thing to do. Beer shrinks your balls. Well, that's all I need to hear. Lay off the Coke. Yeah. Never done that, but I agree. Tyler S. or uh, Tylee goes sober for almost five years. It's hard when you're young, uh, but two DUIs at 21 and a few years of drinking after family had hit my bottom. Yeah. Well, congratulations on five years. Big deal, man. Big deal. Uh, this one goes, my biggest regret is my porn addiction. I shared in images of my girlfriend online and my ex found, no, and your ex found out? Jesus Christ. Yeah, porn, porn's a big one, man. Um, I don't, I don't watch porn anymore because I noticed when I did, it turned into like an everyday thing. So I just stopped. Not easy to do, but. Eventually, you just don't even care. You're just like, then when you do try and watch it again, it's kind of odd. Just two strangers having sex on the internet. Weird stuff, you know? Brittany goes, just jumped on here, but it definitely destroys families. I lost a husband and father of two. Wow, sorry about that. This person goes, I think smoke is okay as long as you're taking care of yourself and the bills are paid. Maybe one or two beers on the weekends. Yeah, ain't no thing, man. I'll still like to, you know, I'll still like to pass it around once in a while, you know. Yeah, see how weird it is when I don't say anything? I'm just going to sit here and not talk. <laughs> I'm trying to get through here. Get through a couple more comments. My biggest regret was wasting my 20s in Iraq and Afghanistan. I deployed twice in the Army and worked as a contractor in Afghanistan for three years. Wasted so much time. Yeah, you know, you would have thought. I think the worst part is, is like going in the Army and you come back, and it turns out no one gives a shit that you were in the army. I don't know. I think it was just different back in the day. You know, it's like you come off the plane, people are saluting you and shit. And now it's like, now I feel like veterans just feel like they're almost like hassling people. Like, do you give a veteran's discount? And the person just rolls your eyes at you. Yeah. I, I could never do the army, man. If there was like a, uh, one of those, what do they call it? The draft, if that ever happened again. I'm out. 
Yeah. Like I would, I couldn't do it. I can't do it. Don't get me wrong. If shit goes down and there was like a fucking real actual war going on, your boy's shooting his way out. You know what I mean? I'm not going to just sit there and, you know, no, I'm a, I'm a fight, but I'm not going to like sign up for it. I'm like you're tripping on that shit. Then make me cut my hair. <laughs> you're out of your damn mind. Um, I guess everybody has a price. You are double taxed. You're taxed on the coin you make and spend. Yeah, you're taxed all the way, baby. We, we all the way taxed. Anyways, guys, we're going to wind it down. I appreciate everybody coming out tonight, staying in here. And, uh, God, you know, I had a great time. Appreciate everybody. Um, also, real quick, something I'm doing now that I don't have a job anymore is uh, I'm starting to post. Obviously, I'm going to be posting here. This is my main. This is the most fun I have. But, uh also, I'm trying to blow up the Instagram. So if you guys want, go ahead, go over to my Instagram. Just give it a follow. You don't have to. No pressure. I already appreciate you being here. But I uh, figured I'd plug that in. I'm trying to really trying to amp shit up this year. Um, and plus, I just quit my job and I hired somebody. So I'm like, okay, it's time to get into high gear. I was actually doing this last night at work. Uh, last night at my last shift, I was just at a table and they were giving me their order and I was just doing this. It was more like right here, but somebody is, uh, there it is. I was just doing this. I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the person's like, are you going to write this down? And then they're like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know. It was very odd. I don't know why I did that. But it was kind of fun. I did it to two different tables. One of them just laughed. The other table was really confused. God, hell of a talk. Thanks for everybody who donated and, uh, Man, that was that was a lot of fun. Solid shit. See, this remote hasn't been working lately. See that? Fucking up my whole groove. God. Love it. <laughs>